Job interviews, career and life advice from just about everybody. Hello there. This is Mike Barrett, along with my brother, Patrick Barrett. Yeah. Well, I- <laughs> Feel free to jump right in. (laughs) Anyway, we are here to tell you the truth about testing, education, and careers, uh, because we believe that in order for you to get the most out of your future, you need access to accurate information from people who've really been there. And we haven't been almost anywhere, but we know people who have. I've been like six places. Yeah, so (laughs) we try to find them and ask all of the most useful, hopefully most useful questions that we can to get whatever information they might have that could be useful to you as you uh, try to set out and make the best choices you can um, in your education and career. So I think we have the perfect first guest for this podcast. Um, Yes, this is, by the way, the first episode of the podcast. I don't know if you listening to this will know this or not. but That's true. Yeah, we have no idea what we're doing. We don't, but we're going to find out really soon. Yes. Um, So, yeah, I think that our first guest is optimal because we want to talk about a lot of different kinds of jobs on this podcast, and some of them are going to be wacky off the wall unusual jobs but we definitely want to cover what people think of as like normal jobs um so our guest today alex um is a person in corporate america uh which really is a huge umbrella term uh, that could be you're in sales logistics accounting <laughs> Why human would she resources be in, you're in sales <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh? um so, <laughs> so yeah bad. that covers a lot of different um topics really and a lot of different kinds of jobs yeah exactly you think corporate america but that could be so many things um and that could be an entry-level position you know where somebody is fresh off an internship or right out of college or that could be you know a top vp somewhere um so so many people are in this world and there's so many different experiences there and it also, to me, sounds super boring <laughs> yeah. and like not fun oh or interesting gosh. or exciting. Yeah, I um, mean, uh, to me now, it, does, it sounds way more interesting because I'm older and I have had people that yeah, I know go through those. But all your of, first impressions of it are like, yeah, when I was in America. school, right? For me personally, the idea of anything that involved like a nine to five and putting on a suit or whatever, I sort of thought I was going to have to do that. Yeah, that that's your only option. There's it, a lot right. of TV shows and movies and things, and people are just in cubicles. Yeah, and like the really, office. Kind of the whole point of the office as a show or is office that space or right. This yeah. type of career is not that fun. It's just drudgery, but the people can be fun while they're doing. Yeah, it. absolutely. And they really emphasize like, oh, uh, like it's the same grind every. Yeah. Yeah. And those jobs are out there for sure. sure. It's not that they're they're not out there, but that's not the only version of it. And um, yeah, I feel like this particular interview is really interesting opportunity to change that perspective, basically, and sure. to, to get a different look. Well, I'll at put it, it this way: I wish that I had heard an interview like this when I was absolutely planning out my life. Yeah, I might have it completely about this changes sort of the job. way that you see this. So, yeah. um, so I'm really really excited about this um, first episode and having Alex as our first guest because we're tackling a whole class of job basically um yeah. and we walked away with a lot of insights that we didn't have in the beginning um about um how interesting it can be how you can be excited about it how you can be good at it um how you can and engage with it and some interesting tactical things like how to find mentors how to uh change your career path within a company if you don't like it yeah model yourself after people in the company that you want sure, to be all like kinds of things and, and sort of how alex is, we don't want to give too much away now but yeah there's there's a lot going on there um it's definitely a, a situation where you can be way more proactive about your yeah. future and your path than i would have realized um, and yeah, I'm really, really excited that we had a chance. Yeah. To we got super lucky that she was the first did. one. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not, if you're one of the other people that we interviewed, I want you to be listening to this and be like, yeah. oh, they didn't like my Every, I mean, yeah, everyone done so far has been amazing. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really know a lot going in about what her job was. I just kind of knew generally she was in, in the corporate world. Right. She worked um, in an office. Yeah. <laughs> an office, you say. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I, we are very excited, I think, to, um, to share this with you guys. We hope that you get a lot out of it. Without further ado, I think your voice just cracked, but I'm not going to point it no, out. No, no, it, it definitely didn't. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, yes, without giving any more away or uh, wasting any more of your time, um, let's jump right into it, and you can hear uh, from Alex herself. We are here uh, with Alex Bialik, who, uh, name uh, with whom I went to high school yes. um, <laughs> many, many years ago. And... Uh, 
yeah, can you, I have a vague sense of what your job is. I don't actually know what it is. So in your own words, uh, yeah. if you'd like to just give a brief introduction of who you are and what you do as, sure. as much details you feel like. So I work for a global consumer goods company. Cool. Um, it's called RB. I'm actually on the RB health side of the business. Cool. So we make products that you may be familiar with, like Lysol, Mucinex, Sepacol, Clearasil, Durex, no, KY. Yeah, what are these things? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am quite so, familiar with Lysol. Yeah, so big, big brands that you're, we're all familiar. Um, and so I am actually a sales director. And so my team across the country um, supplies all of our does sales for all of our broker managed business, all of our grocery, like mid tier grocery customers, the entire convenience channel, and the entire military channel. So if you go into any of those stores and you see Man, any of our products, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, <laughs> yeah. then it's somebody on my team has helped to sell those products in, huh. has helped to educate cool. the stores about why things are where they, you know, when you see something on a shelf in a certain place, my mm -hmm. team helps guide them as to why we want it here and not six inches oh, over. Yeah, I've heard a lot of that. Word, uh, planogram, is that? Yeah, that's planogram. A planogram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah, something else. <laughs> yeah. So, we know the word my team, my team does planograms, which are just like the pictures of what goes where wow. on shelf and why. There's all there's a science behind Wait, why. I can ask you. We can ask you about that for <laughs> yeah. easily it's a six word. hours. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, like the psychology and everything. I love I've it. Heard a lot about it, like in a general sense. Yeah. So really, like it's well, I love a fascinating it. concept. So yeah, several things. Um, we have a list of questions here, which you may be able to see, which I don't think we're actually ever going to ask. But um, <laughs> yeah. uh, see backup questions. Yeah, like several things that you just said, yeah. I think, um, are going to be phrases that, frankly, our audience uh, has never heard before, okay. <laughs> such as mid-tier broker managers, yeah. you know, those kinds of things. Definitely. Um, and I would like to explore those in a second, but yeah. first. Did you know that the kind of literary interpretation your English teacher might love to hear in a classroom discussion will actually lead you to wrong answer choices to reading comprehension questions on tests like the SAT and the ACT? To find out more, look for our SAT Prep Black Book 2nd Edition and our ACT Prep Black Book 2nd Edition on Amazon.com. How did you, in a more general and a more broad sense, how did you even come to acquire that vocabulary? And when you started in whatever position eventually led you to this position, what was the learning curve for that? Were you specifically trained on those things or did you pick them up from just being around them? Yes. How did all that work? Yes, by no means did I come by that on my own. <laughs> I was very fortunate to have found mentors early on at all stages of my career. Um, mm. and, and that happened very unofficially. Like at no point did a, people ever say like, here's your mentor, go. Yeah. Like it huh. was people with whom I connected or who found me um, at, at any stage in, in mm -hmm. my roles. And then I would just stay asking them questions and all that sort of thing. So that is some way that helped me probably pick things up quicker than I would have picked up if I would have waited for the regular training sessions sure. that would come my way. Can I ask you, sorry, yeah. uh, again, it's no, going to no, be hard to like, balance all these questions you want to ask. <laughs> um, would you say, do you think, and this might be a silly question, but if uh, we were to speak to those people that you're calling your mentors, would they say, oh yeah, I was your mentor? Or do they not even necessarily realize that you were viewing them in that kind of I, way in some cases? I would strategically at some point make it a point to tell them I looked at them as mentors awesome. yeah. to keep them. <laughs> right. <That's laughs> right. Well, because it makes sense. I'm guessing yeah. you probably mentor people now. Yes. And you're like, oh, this person yes. yeah. looks up to me. Yeah. It, it, it creates yeah, a like way. It makes it a real yes. thing and it has like And it makes it harder for them to stop answering right. my questions. <laughs> Because that's, because just that's like that's right. not a mentor anymore. Right. Like, you know, right. I can't think of yeah. myself as more well. Yeah. And but so, it's an interesting, like, even that one little piece of advice. Yeah. Like, yeah. Call that person a mentor. Yes. <laughs> you, it worked well for me. Did you ever yeah. have it not work? Did you ever try to get that kind of relationship with somebody and they just turned you away? I think. Explicitly or implicitly? You know, you know I think at the point, it, it, nothing explicitly, but I think at the point that you find that that relationship isn't mutually beneficial, that you almost just can tell. You yeah, can tell like that it's just uncomfortable. Sort of, like there yeah. is no like magic behind it. You just sure. know like, all right, I'm not getting the answers that no, I need yeah, or yeah. I'm not getting additional support. So mm -hmm. there will be other people who will be there and be supportive. So kind of cool. just a lot of it happens a little organically. Sure. And then you just force some of the like mentorship stuff where you like <laughs> ask them to lunch yeah. or awesome. you ask happen. people yeah. to be a part of your day who might not otherwise have been. Mm -hmm. And I was also very fortunate that somebody early on taught me to be brave and ask people regardless of the level they were. So very early on, I had 
the guts, I guess. I, like, I was scared, yeah, but I had sure. the guts to the right ask word, like VPs, you know, vice presidents, yeah. to like mentor me and like go to lunch with me. And I'm cool. sure they probably hadn't had a lot of people asking, yeah, so they yeah. loved it. <clears throat> yeah, um, and a lot of them were more inclined to do it because nobody was less people are bold enough to do sure, that sure, sure. when you're especially earlier just on. by doing that you're demonstrating yeah your, like initiative is a yeah. real yeah it's a value thing and it's hard to have it's intimidating like, yes it well and i think and it was yeah <laughs> <laughs> you do it and you're like oh yeah but the payoff was great because yeah. i made amazing relationships many of whom i'm still connected and i also learned a lot sure from people who are much further along which huh. taught me to think about things five ten steps down the road not just what's next what's yeah, next week beyond the current project yes. or whatever yeah, yeah. could Which you helped. give um an example of a time when uh one of these conversations or or relationships over time led you to make a, a specific decision where yeah. you thought wow if that person hadn't done whatever i would have gone this way instead of that way totally i have the perfect example of that so when i first started right out of college i was working for the hershey company and i was in a retail sales role and mm -hmm. what that is is I was a person who wore like khakis, carried a box cutter in my back pocket, and I would go to stores and help build displays for Halloween with product. Hmm. Like grocery stores? Like grocery yeah, stores, okay. Walmart. I would go into whatever store was on my list. And I was not very good at that job because I was short. I wasn't strong. <laughs> like, I still am short. I'm Neither still not sure. Neither of those are the things I was, I don't know what I was expecting, but, yeah. but So I was kind of starting from behind, yeah. even though the job itself was an incredible job and very rewarding, but some of the basics to just do some things were a little bit tougher for me. So I felt like I had to work a little harder. So the job was, a ch and, and I enjoyed it. I got to go to stores constantly, but yeah. I went to a meeting one time and there was a guest speaker and he was in this world called category management and used all these words like I used a little mm -hmm. bit ago yeah. and I had no idea what the words were and I thought it was all German and it was so unusual to me because I just didn't know it. And I went out of the way to introduce myself to him after the session and found out that he lived in the general region. So that was my connection. Oh, okay. He nice. lived in Florida and I was in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I asked him if I could learn more about his job. Through talking to him, he quickly said, have you ever heard, you know, have you thought about going into category management? I hadn't because I didn't know yeah. that world existed. Sure. And he shared with me that that was the analytics side of the business, <clears> the <throat> thinking, the problem solving, the cr looking at data and finding a story. Hmm. And so he was, so exciting. yeah, <laughs> so I didn't know that that existed. Right. And so, because I was packing out cases and displays on shelf yeah. and I didn't know. So he said, if you want to go into that job, that's not the normal route after this job. Yeah. But if you want to go down that path, you should probably start thinking with that kind of cap, like thinking cap in today's job. Hmm. So as you build displays, you should be telling your store managers, Hey, here are the numbers. Here's how the display worked and it sold more Hershey Kisses, or yeah. it didn't, or here's why you should do this versus green beans. And so it unlocked for me this world that I didn't even know. So I approached my current job differently. Sure. And then it also helped me think about like what was next. Cause I did, I would have just kind of taken the path that was set out. Yeah. That yeah, HR would normally say, here's what normally happened. Yeah. And that wouldn't have been it. And then that turned into several years in category management, which is really, again, the science of how and why people shop the way that they do. And I loved it. Yeah. So like, and that was a very pivotal moment for of me, course. especially since I wasn't good in the sales role, <laughs> yeah. the sales rep role. Yeah. <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah. And you, just parenthetically, are a fantastic first podcast. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I almost yeah. feel like we're wasting you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd be happy to join again. Full circle. Yeah, exactly. um, so how did you uh, come to have the retail job that you felt like you weren't great at? How did that, <laughs> how'd that even happen? So I, at the time, actually, when I was in college, I um, interned with a completely different company. I interned with CSX, a railroad company. And I was there for several years and truly enjoyed that as well. Um, but in my mind, I thought I wanted to kind of go different places and do different things. And so in school, I was a part of a group which is now called Enactus. Um, and it's like, you know, building projects and problem solving and helping bring, you know, opportunities to businesses and people. E-N-A-C-T-U-S. E Enactus, yes. Uh, that's what I, it used to be SIFE. Um, but so I was in Sorry, this group, S-I-F-E, Students in Free Enterprise. Ah, so it okay. used so with that prod group that I was in in college, amazing organization. I would recommend it to 
college kids everywhere. Cool. Um, but that organization <clears throat> that I was a part of, they had this massive career fair. Can anybody join this group as yeah. far as you know? Like yeah. You show up as long as there's a college, as long as there's one at your it's college. It's not like a certain join. major or something. Or no, oh, and that's cool. the beauty of it wow. is really cool. when I was in that organization, I because one of the projects we did was in Africa, I had the chance to go travel to Africa as a part oh, wow. of being in that group. I had the chance to do um, project work within local schools and the community. Like, it's really a it's a cool kind Sounds of community service based organization, yeah. but that provides economic opportunity and yeah. helps like be kind of mini consultants when you're in college, yeah, which is sure. really cool. Wow. Wow. So I went to this massive career fair and I found Hershey, or they were a part of it, and we found each other. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, "Well, the way that you join is through this retail sales role." And so it was kind of like the only path, but I loved Hershey. I loved the values that they had. Everybody loves Hershey. Yeah. And yeah. so that's how I ended up in the role. And then wow. it's kind of like the one way to get in, or at the time it was, the mm -hmm. way to kind of get into the role. So it worked out perfectly. Wow. Yeah. Cool. And how did you move from, um, did you go from Hershey straight to your current role or were there things in, in between? Yeah, so I first was in sales rep. I was actually down in like the South Florida-ish area. And when I got that big jump to category management, again, luckily I had had the good fortune of speaking with mentors who helped get me prepared. And even in that process, by the way, I was a little early on in applying for the job that I ended up getting but it was only because I had my manager was a great mentor to me. <clears throat> he had a buddy who connected me and did mock interviews with me and prepared me wow. and told like That's I was, useful. it was yeah. very <laughs> useful because I don't know that I would have been as prepared had somebody not given me clues of what yeah. to, how to answer questions, how not. Yeah, sure. And so really by this unofficial network of mentors, yeah. I was very fortunate and got that job. And so I moved up to Hershey, Pennsylvania. I was there for several years in different category management functions that progressively had more responsibility. And then I joined RB um, in 2011. I joined RB. But there's different, there's like a parent company, I think it's all different No, nope, completely okay. separate company. <laughs> I didn't know if they were um, like chocolate, chocolate Lysol. Lysol. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Chocolate, chocolate Lysol. Lysol. <laughs> yes. It should be managing categories, two very different categories. Yeah, it's yes. very different. It's like day one. <laughs> day um, one. Yeah. one is tasty. These are things you can eat. These are things you can yeah. eat. Yeah. <laughs> Come That's back to me. <laughs> Sorry, okay, That's yeah, please go ahead. So, um, yeah. so, and what I will say is for anybody who like, as they think about building a career, even probably at high school, college level, like LinkedIn is how this company found mm -hmm. me. So a headhunter, um, a recruiting company, mm -hmm. was recruiting for a role to fill in Florida. And because I had my, the college that I went to was in Florida, because I had roots in Florida, they found my information and they reached out to me and asked me to interview. So having a LinkedIn cool. profile helped people reach out to me, which ultimately helped me find this job sure. or awesome. this company. Yeah. So for LinkedIn, I mean, straightforward, just fill out a profile, keep it up to date, like yeah. sure, nothing like special or fancy. Mine just isn't even fancy. Mine just has and... job titles, yeah. the school or whatever you studied or even interests. Like if you like data or whatever, but I think probably most importantly, especially early on is following companies that you're interested in. So yeah. LinkedIn, yeah. like any kind of social media platform, you can follow companies that pique your interest. Sure. And yeah. what's great is if you want to go into consumer goods or you want to go into the finance industry or whatever industry, or maybe you don't know where you want to go, mm -hmm. if you start following all these groups, you might actually- You'll get a sense. Yeah, you kind of get a sense. Whether it is or something. Yeah, and like then you start not, hearing yeah. the language mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then you start to kind of hear the language, speak the language before you even have to do it. Sure. So you have a little yeah. bit more prepared, which um, helped. Yeah. So then I've been at RB ever since and then in progressively different roles since I joined almost eight years ago. Cool. Yeah. How um, <laughs> similar or dissimilar <laughs> is your current role um, to the first role that you had at RB? So very different because I'm a, my role has a lot of people management in it now. There's a few layers of people below me. So it, it changes. I went from being an individual contributor, mm -hmm. somebody who I really just had my own to do, my own yeah. priorities. Certainly that impacted other people, but I just had my own responsibilities. Yeah, sure. You're yourself. And this I is did the first point in your career where you're that much yes. of managing people. Yeah, and it was wonderful and it was the best training ground to be able to prepare myself for having good habits, doing the right things. So now yeah. as I manage people, I can speak to what I did before sure. and know what the good and bad habits I had and maybe still do and like try to correct <laughs> them. Yeah. Um, so mine now is very much a function of people management. I before used to be more on the category analytical side, which is like the data. 
-hmm. I now am more on the sales side of the business. So I interact with a lot of the customers um, and the customers would be grocery accounts or Mm -hmm. military or convenience accounts. So I interact at a business to business level more now than I did before. So those are probably some of the main differences. Huh. Um, Were you trained by the company to be a manager of people or to what extent is that something that you've come up with on your own and and to what extent is it something that they kind of laid out for you? Yeah, so um, different companies have different things. So within our company, we do have um, a lot of, um, what are they called, like webinar type Mm -hmm. things, which will help you with kind of soft skills of what you can and can't do. But there's never been, for me anyway, maybe tattling if I should have been going to something. <laughs> there's, yeah, never, like, there's never been like a manager 101. Yeah, the um, basics of no. yeah. getting, making sure people are doing what they're What I will tell you, the best training ground has been things I've loved and have not loved about my past managers. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. So, Your own experience. You know, even when you think, yeah, yeah, even if you think about like relating it back to school, there mm-hmm. are some types of teaching that you really enjoy yeah. and some that you don't. That you respond to. And so, yeah, and, and every student is different. So for me, I try to remember that everyone on my team has a different style and they care about different things, which forces me to flex and sure. act differently and yeah. and tailor motivate things differently, differently and motivate kinds of things. differently. Yeah. Um, Do you, oh, sorry. But yeah, so no, no class, although I'm sure that'd be interesting, but yeah. it's hard because there probably isn't a one size fits all. Sure, yeah, sure, sure. Do you um, use any kind of like personality tests or anything yes. with your team? To, okay, which yes. ones? Yes, so we so? recently did, um, gosh, I, didn't know I was going to be put on the spot. <laughs> we recently did one where we all have colors. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember the name. But it was actually a really great session. The company orchestrated it. And it was a really amazing session where it was very interactive. Like you found out what people's conscious and subconscious, mm-hmm. um, you know, what you, who you are outwardly and then right. who you might be mm-hmm. when no one else And is that's around. an interesting thing, too, uh, that I think maybe a lot of our, our audience um, will probably otherwise never have someone say explicitly, the you that you think you are yes. and the you that everyone else thinks you are are two same. generally different yeah. people, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> because you know what's going There's on. There's stuff that you know right. assume about you that other people totally. have, might right. not have no way yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that goes for strengths and weaknesses people. because very much. you might think that you don't have a strength that everyone else thinks you're very good at. You right. might be very aware of a weakness that no one else has realized yes. you have. Because, so it can yeah. be humbling. <clears throat> it can be very humbling to think your strengths are one thing and then maybe you find, oh, okay, externally maybe they don't aren't perceived that way. Sure. Or, more importantly, it helps you say, oh, I'm really great at these things. And so that's how I can make sure the things that maybe aren't my favorite parts or maybe I'm not wonderful at, or maybe yeah. I still need to learn. It helps you find the other people yeah. who are good at it. To fill in the gaps. And, and fill that's in the gaps. an important thing too. Um, it seems to me, I don't know if you would agree, that uh, a successful company or a successful organization doesn't have like a whole bunch of people who are all basically good at everything. That doesn't even really exist. Right. You have people who have specific things they're totally. good at, right? And you build a team. Totally. Is that- yeah. So at my team in particular, of the folks who are especially in my immediate team, everyone is very different. And it's funny because you you kind of know everyone is different, but to see it plotted out on paper. Yeah. It, Here's the truth. Yeah. Like, I always knew that guy. I was like, yeah. Yeah. nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing I learned about myself, my personal style is I'm a very direct person, mm-hmm. which could be good or bad. And, Seems you know, to be like, serving you well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, <suppose. laughs> I go to the VP. Uh, that's, yeah. that's right. And that's one that example of where it works. Yeah. Um, and, and so for me, for example, the subconscious, unconscious, uh, subconscious and conscious, those actually happen to be the exact same spots for me, which was a little bit more hmm. rare within our total organization. There's only a few people who are like that. Mm-hmm. But it was great because our HR people, they did have classes on like, okay, how can you make sure that you maybe don't come off as direct all the time? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, so there, you know, that those kinds of classes probably were the most beneficial. We've done a lot of those. We've done fun ones too that you can get free online. Yeah, sure. And like 16 hmm. personalities is a cool one that you can do for free online. That's cool. um, and, and so those have been beneficial. How often do uh, more people join your organization group? Like, what should I call the people that you're in charge so of? So, my your, team. Your team. Um, so, I actually just have two people who are new who just started. Both of them will be around at least a year. They're actually okay. uh, entry level, kind of round college, just right out of college. This is either their first or third job right out of school. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're in analytical roles, so they're actually going through training now. Um, and that's probably about the extent of it every year or two. Mm-hmm. 
But the folks who are in some layers below that, it could be as often as six months or it could be, I have some people on my team who have been in the roles for 20 years, Yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's very different. There isn't a, a perfect uh, formula. With that um, flux of, of people coming and staying different periods of time, when you are uh, hiring, I, I don't know if you make direct hiring mm -hmm. decisions or if you, okay. So when you're doing that, um, are you thinking to yourself, okay, we we're filling this role and this person just left that role and they were that kind of personality. I have to find somebody just like that kind of personality no. or it's not. No. Even, yeah. I mean, I will think about what was that personality and more than the personality, because everybody has like their quirks. Like, I don't know that you would necessarily want my personality for everything, but you, my strengths and my opportunities are, are probably what matters more. Sure. Um, so I would think about what strengths did that person bring and probably most importantly, what gaps were there in that region or what gaps were there. And then how do I find a way to make sure we, you know, don't yeah. have those gaps again? You have an sure. opportunity to address that. Yeah. yeah. And again, it's not, I think, again, please correct me, it's not that gaps are bad. Everyone no. has gaps. It's just Absolutely. awareness of we have to know what the gaps like, are. Right. Because, them. yeah. Yeah. Totally. Like, I have gaps and I strategically hire people who don't have those gaps. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, for example, I, you know, when you guys were coming here today, I barely gave you directions, like, at the last minute of, like, oh, here's how you get in the building. No, no, that's like, perfect for us. <laughs> yes. yeah. All of my life is looking like <laughs> That might not be yes. my strength, but right. I fortunately have some folks on my team who are amazing with that sort of thing. Sure. So, it's just, like, with the mentor kind of relationship in any relationship lateral or otherwise like to lean into the people around you yeah. because you just can't do it all right you know and and even if you can it's not sustainable like yeah, at some point you should just to yeah, yeah. Be the person who your does network everything. is incredibly important yeah. Yeah. genuine relationships in your network help most guarantees for test prep courses make it sound like you can get your money back if you don't like the course but if you actually try to exercise that guarantee you'll probably get an unpleasant surprise most companies use tactics like requiring you to document your scores before and after their course to prove that the course really didn't help you, or even just rejecting your claim if you don't attend every single class session in the course. In some cases, even if they do actually honor their guarantee, all that actually means is you get to take the same course over again, the course that failed to help you the first time around. But at Quest Prep, our guarantee is much simpler. If you're unhappy with our online video course for the SAT or the ACT, all you have to do is let us know within 30 days and you get every single penny back. You don't have to prove anything to us or jump through any hoops. If you don't like the course, then we don't want to keep your money. To learn more about the other unique attributes of our courses, stay tuned to the end of this episode or just head over to questprep.com and click the courses tab. Sorry, when you were talking about your, your gaps and you mentioned earlier uh, good habits and bad habits, which I'm kind of going to like lump those things together, yeah. not exactly the same thing. Um, did your mentors ever, or, or even non-mentor managers or coworkers, were they ever the ones who brought something to your attention? Yes. Can you give an example yes. of that? So, because be, one of my, I guess, this is like the typical interview question, and it sounds like it's so contrite mm -hmm. and not real. Mm -hmm. But yeah. one of my greatest strengths is also a terrible weakness of mine, and that I am a insane perfectionist. Like, I want everything to be perfect. That does sound like the... Yes. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, very true. Yeah, but, but it truly it's, it's can be—it yeah. can be paralyzing for me. Yeah. It can be paralyzing for me because I want everything to be perfect, and sometimes it can be hard to act. Because yes, it's hard yeah, to act. Things not lined up, and especially whatever. with data. Yeah. Like there's what we call sure. in this in this world, and probably a lot of industries, analysis paralysis. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Where like there's so much opportunity to analyze everything, and then yeah. you just like freeze. You never feel like yeah, <laughs> you yeah, just yeah. Can't actually get anything, or you go down rabbit holes. Yeah. So very early on, actually, when I joined this company, especially. One of our core values, which I think they've since rebranded, but one of our core <laughs> values <Yeah>. was, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which was really challenging, yeah. was speed over perfection. Hmm. And that may not work in every type of role, sure. but it was really good for me because somebody had to sit me down, a boss of mine, and say, yeah. speed over perfection. It doesn't matter if it's perfect. Just do something. Get 90% yeah. of the way there, so that way you at least get feedback. 
Yeah. That's something yeah, I was going to add. Right. Everything, most things are like an ongoing right. process. Like, like you're going to go back and adapt that things. Like, just right. get it's almost never final. It Nothing is, is really. And yeah. so for yeah. me, I was so worried about how it would look. Is it, is it going to be perfect? Are you going to judge if it's... And like, yeah. they had to just say, just turn it in so I can even give you feedback and tell you it's great or it's terrible sure. or it's on yeah. track or it's not. Sure. So you don't waste your time kind of going down a rabbit hole. That I was never, really good feedback for me. Um, I never really connected these ideas until now, and maybe there isn't a connection, but I wonder if part of why uh, a lot of people feel that kind of analysis paralysis might have to do with school and education. It's very rare that you have a project that's done in like 10 phases. Right. That's and true. the goal is just get the first Normally thing Normally you turn today. something in, right. you never you know really get a chance to go back. Right. right. Normally you're driving yourself crazy having everybody, you know, look at it and maybe mm-hmm. the yeah. teacher gives you like one or two, you know, sessions of, yeah, this is good or change that. Yeah. And then you turn it yeah. in. I wonder, do you think there's any connection? Between totally. Those? Especially because one of the other things I learned early on that was a challenge for me was the time management and priority management. I'm awful at all of these things. Yes. <laughs> and, and I think we all kind of... Me <laughs> this, yeah, <dude. laughs> like, I do yeah. think that it can be kind of awful for everybody initially, yeah. especially mm-hmm. in any new role, because you don't know what's the most important. You don't know what's important yet. You yeah, don't no, know. Why would you That's know, true. You know, so How can you manage priority? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and then you also don't know the dynamics of different people and who's whom and, yeah. and, and how impactful is this versus the next project. So... Until you know how to traverse or, and, and, and navigate your way around the people in the landscape, you don't even know what is important. So I early on got a planner at the time, and I still use a physical planner, but I know people have wow. moved on to oh, digital wow. planners. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> people Can you use their phone. Your fingers, like how thick, how, what, I what do. I, yeah, it's, it like, it's, it's like this. Okay. It's like... <laughs> but, I, but I also have a notebook with me. I, like I always, and hmm. you know, have that stuff only because I just didn't know. So I would do an exercise with my one of my first bosses in category management, where I would tell him all of my priorities, and then he would say. Those aren't your priorities. <laughs> 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 and when I struggled with time, and he would also, I would have to put the due date. Mm-hmm. And he would also say, well, when, how long did it really take you? And then I would say, oh, exactly as much as I thought. So what, what I learned was the <laughs> next week, he would say, how much did you actually get done? And how long did it take you? It eventually turned into how much, how, I think Project X, this planogram, this mm-hmm. whatever, is going to take six hours. Well, then next week I would revisit it and realize, ooh, it actually took 12 hours. My priority setting and my time management's maybe not where it should be. Yeah. So I had to kind of force myself to look at how long do I think something is going to take versus how long it takes. And then it helped me be better at manage, ma- managing my time and priorities. Yeah. Because like a otherwise, more accurate picture right. of what yeah. you're really doing, which is hard to have. Or, it's you know, very because, hard. Yeah. If you don't take the time to assess, did it actually take me the time? And it, yeah. In the yeah, I actually thought that was an exercise that felt very tedious. Mm-hmm, and yeah. I, well, why would I have to estimate the time? Yeah, I still, whenever I have new analysts start, I now make them do that same process. <laughs> that <makes sense>. yeah. <laughs> and, and do you yeah. tell them, "Hey, I used to think this was stupid yes. too, but now yeah. it's very important." I'm, yeah. Again, very direct. Sometimes yeah. too direct, and I'm yeah. very transparent. Like mm-hmm. I, you know, the two people who are starting this week, they're in similar roles, and. I'm sharing with them, like, this is the tool that I use. I actually just did. And I said, especially one of them, he laughed at me when I gave him a notebook to start the job. (laughs) Because he said, quote, unquote, writing is, (laughs) he just was like, writing is like in the Stone Age. Age." All right, thank you for that. Um, But it was, I told him, like, even though everyone is moving to phones. Like mm-hmm. he at one point he said this week, let me or last week, let me write that down. And he pulled his phone out and started to like message it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Which yeah. sure is very normal. But I think yeah. a great lesson to remember is that not everybody is used to that. Sure. Yeah. So it can be easy to think you're just like playing a game on your phone. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah. sometimes yeah. we have to check ourselves and Yeah. You know, and that's another And even uh, if you're not playing a game, it's easy to start <laughs> 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 yeah. so, yeah. And that's check another, thing uh, do that and, yeah, another huge know, thing I think for um, the people who might be listening to this. Yeah. Like, hopefully there will be some. <laughs> which is that, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, right now, uh, you know, you guys are. I just turned forty, so I'm not young anymore. But you guys are pretty. Yeah. So um, you guys got some good years. Right? <laughs> yeah. um, but there's a tremendous difference between, say, the experience of 
uh, you and a manager or boss who is 10 years older mm-hmm. than you versus totally. someone who's 10 years younger than you. Yeah. It's like six generations of change between you and them. Yeah. And I think that uh, a lot of our listeners may not realize to somebody else at your age or older how totally off-putting and rude it seems that they're so looking off. at a phone. They might actually be deeply engaged in yeah. research that's super important it's to whatever you're talking about. Possibly. But it doesn't yeah. feel that way. It always feels yeah. like... Or it's Angry Birds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or it's angry. I don't even angry know if that's a thing. I was going to say, look at I don't anymore. think it's been Angry Birds. <laughs> Sorry. <for a> while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever, whatever's the hidden thing. What is currently the... Yeah, but that's, I, just, I just wanted to call that out because... Uh, it's a really good example of, yeah. of that. Yeah, so I, so with that, just being aware, like especially since I'm in sales, like you always have to know your audience. You hear that all the time. Sure. Yeah. But I think that especially translate not just into the people to whom you present, but it translates with the people who are in a room with you. Like how do you not offend everybody yeah. by pulling your phone <laughs> yeah. out? Or And, and also because it, it not only is being considerate of them, but... We also, you know, not everybody has the re- same resources available to them. Not everybody That's has. A very good point. So it's just about yeah. being considerate huh. because we don't know, Didn't even think of that. you yeah. know, you don't want to make an assumption about any group sure. that you're around or that yeah. you're sure. presenting to or working with or whatever. That's really interesting too. And something I think um, I have come to believe, I don't know if it's something that's widely believed or not, but you know, there was a period of time where I think a lot of people tried to multitask and believe that multitasking was like actually a mm-hmm. possible thing, which I don't really think it is. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> so, you know, if you see, if you as a manager, yeah. a leader, you see someone on a phone, even if in their mind they somehow are listening to you completely and doing whatever they're doing, right. it doesn't look that way. Right. Right. You don't yeah. feel that that's what it is. And on some level, I'm sure it's a little bit like, why do you not think I'm important enough to you? Let's, oh, you know, yeah. You know what I'm, is that? And then yeah. for me as a manager, and again, very direct, but as a manager, I'm going to think now, I guess the best example, there was a long time ago that I was a waitress and I loved that job, by the way. I really enjoyed that? it. There was a whole timeline we're building. So it was like college. I was in college. In college. Okay. So okay, why cool. also worked at the railroad. So I did waitressing. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, so in, I was a waitress at that time and I always wrote the order down when they gave it to me Mm -hmm. because I didn't want to make a mistake because I can make mistakes. Yeah. Now as a, as a customer, if I sit down and we give you a long order and you don't write anything down and you mess it up, I'm going to be upset because (laughs) I knew you had the opportunity to write it down. Yeah, exactly. It's not like there was, it's not like you wrote it down and like maybe it got translated wrong and like reading it legible. No, you had a chance and you didn't. Right. Yeah. So now translate that to my day job. If I'm talking to you and you're on your phone and I don't know what you you're doing, and you're not, you had a chance. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, and so now I'm going to maybe be more yeah. upset yeah. if you yeah. don't yeah. meet the mark. Whereas you're demonstrating effort and, if you're at least doing it. If you get it wrong, it's like, well, you know. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, but I think the optics are important yeah. as anybody yeah. is in a new role, in changing roles, or in their existing role. Like, Optics are a lot of it too. Yeah, like sure. you want to show people that you care as much as you actually. You're kind care. of making small impressions yeah, all the time. Every day. And like with the whole like importance of the mentor situation, like you mentioned, that could be a huge thing. The difference between you know somebody's talking and you're looking at your phone, or someone's talking. You know, yeah, yeah, totally. Just, yeah, that can. And really big something else, yeah. uh, kind of along those lines, which again I think might be a, a new idea for a lot of our audience. When you are out here in the real world, mm-hmm. you're like playing for keeps. It's not like. You know, if you had a, a, a college assignment due or something and you got a C on it, right. that's just, you know, that, that affects you only, really, totally. for the most yep. part. But when you're building this team, if there are people on the team who aren't doing whatever it is that they need to be doing in, in how you've laid everything out, the livelihoods of the other members Absolutely. of the team are affected. The company is affected. You know, it's, totally. it's, I would liken it to being on a professional sports team if you have one of the athletes who just isn't doing what they're supposed to do. Everyone's other guys can get hurt or right, exactly. Can, it's not just or you know, whatever. So it's yeah. not just write this down because I want to feel like you're writing it down. It's write this down because like we're doing it. This we're matters. Yeah. Yeah. This is something is happening. Super here. important yeah. here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, sense. like that whole thing of you're only as good as the weakest link. Like sure. It, it yeah. really does. It really does resonate. I mean, in my world with sales, especially, but in every industry, a lot of what you do, it's kind of like group projects. Remember that group project is the grade that everybody gets? Of course, mm-hmm. of course. And, I used to drive me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I did not love group projects, yeah. but I yeah. didn't realize that there was nothing that prepared me more for 
the corporate world like, and group projects. Grown up work you life don't get is to decide who's in your group. Yeah. And even wow. if you do, you often make bad choices because <laughs> yeah. what you think about somebody yeah. is not necessarily. Sorry, I just I had a massive <laughs> just now. <laughs> because yeah. let me tell you, when I used to do it every group project, <laughs> yeah. from college on, I would just go to the people and say, is it okay if I do this whole project? <laughs> and then I would. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Anyway, please continue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, case in point. So, I think that was the best, like, in retrospect, I now see the value of those projects that were really hmm. a challenge. Yeah. yeah. But I, there's no better training ground than doing it there where, like you said, it really mostly only affects you. Maybe you'll get a particular grade. Yeah, sure. But that's the time in school to learn yeah. how to deal with personalities, how yeah. to have tough conversations where people are or are not, you know, picking up their weight. So that way, when you get into the w- real world no matter what type of role you do or what industry you play in, you will be in a massive group project like, yeah. Yeah. every day. That's true. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Just one long every day. group Life project. Life is <laughs> yeah. the ultimate group project. It, yes. really kind of it seems like the ability to just talk to someone, yes. work with people, interact with them, communicate, like be direct. Like yep. It's yeah. such a huge thing and it's, I think it's probably hard to teach and learn, but I think it's more that it's not, nobody's really giving it a shot. No one's trying to teach educa- you know, Yeah, I feel like we're, for the most people are more and more isolated with phones and whatever, and you can you can message someone instead of mm-hmm. calling them, or you know what I mean, you can avoid yeah. the actual moment where you're finally just talking to someone. You can choose to avoid that, and I think that the more people don't make that choice, especially in the corporate world, or you know, you, the you, make, you make these really important connections, yeah. and you kind of have a, we're at like a time where that's more unusual, maybe more difficult to do, but you kind of make yourself stand out more probably totally. by actually just doing it. Like, you know, agreed. Yeah. I have a rule with my own rule that I try to encourage other people on my team to do. If you can see them in person, go walk over to them and say if it. If it's an option. Yeah. If you can't sense. go walk over them, then call them. If you can't call them, then you may email them. If so you cannot email that is, them, I think the exact opposite of what everyone else does. You know, yeah. if you can text them, you, know, right. you have to call. You know, like, like it's text the other should thing. be your last option yeah. after instant message. Like you should. Wow. You it's can, that granular. Right? But, but it is yeah. because I, yeah, that's the, smart. the more you get into the back and forth, the more chances to misinterpret what somebody yeah, said. You absolutely. don't hear tone. You don't know if somebody's yeah. serious. And actually, when you get into especially corporate settings. It doesn't matter whether your tone is a joke or whatever. We go through legal trainings Ooh, in yeah, my world. And so again, every year like you take serious, legal, it's, it's serious. Real, yeah. Like you yeah. cannot put something on email or text that you don't mean, so regardless of tone. Does it by be, joke? Right, uh, yeah. If you, you know, so it's a little bit different than kind of the other setting. So if you can do it in person or on the phone, that's always my, even though it feels so archaic, yeah. it's a good way to also connect with people. Sure. And I've mm. made a lot of really great connections just from that and then people are more willing once you meet somebody or talk to them on person it's easier to approach them it's easier later about other stuff, and then you learn their yeah. motivations like you mentioned yeah. you learn what's important huh. to them so you then maybe address your request differently next time sure and sometimes that's the difference of getting you know the support you need or the support that you can help somebody else with yeah hmm. huh when you mentioned um hard conversations what percentage of the time roughly would you say a conversation that you have falls into the Unpleasant category. Probably, I guess it just depends on this, the type of role that you're in. Probably mm-hmm. a small percentage. And I think the more you do the right things consistently, the more you avoid you're getting into so bad situations. Bad situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like the more you try to connect with people, the more that you are like trying to connect yeah. with them and not do emails and IMs all the time. Sure. And the more that you find a way to get to know the people and what you're doing and take time to set objectives then the less you find yourselves in situations where either you're the subject of a tough conversation mm-hmm. right. or you're handing Initiated one to one. another person. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where feedback is important too, <clears throat> is if you are a manager or you are an individual contributor, you should constantly ask for feedback. And like there should never, you shouldn't wait just till half- halfway <clears throat> through the year when it's usually standard yeah. or at the end of the year. You should say, is this good? Are you okay with this? Like, am yeah. I on the right track? And it's okay, they might say no, but if you don't ask them, how will you know if you did it right or not? And you're not? demonstrating, I care if I'm doing right. it right. You right. know, like it Absolutely. matters to me whether to I'm sitting here waiting my time. Like, yeah, I know exactly. this is important. Right. I'm trying to do it. important to you. Yeah. And, and it's, it's a lot harder to be upset or bothered or disappointed in somebody's work when you yeah. know that they care enough that to even sense. ask if it's right. Yeah. They're and engaged with it. And, yeah. Very rarely will people be bothered with taking time to make sure you get it right. 
Yes, but very sure. rarely. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Do you find, um, as you sort of progress upwards through the levels of, of your career, do you find that people, the higher up you get, are generally more competent, empathic, understanding, or less, or that there's no correlation? I think there's probably not, depending on the company that you're at, <clears throat> there's probably not a, a guaranteed correlation. I think um, y there's probably a correlation between success at those levels okay. and acceptance and people wanting to be a part of those people's teams. But quite frankly, some people are in roles because they inherited a role from another place or because it was an obvious yeah. transition or because they have the right skill set and maybe they're not that good at the interpersonal stuff. Yeah, sure. I do think there's a relationship with their ability to get a team to follow them and to believe and to be excited about coming to work. But there's mm -hmm. not necessarily, like, you have to be that way. Right, right, right. I do yeah. think that you can be more successful more quickly and be and enjoy what you do if you, sure. you know. Which is another that. part of it, like, the enjoyment. Yeah. Everyone's happier. Yeah. Yeah. Helps productivity. Plus, it just makes your life worth living, you know, when, totally. you, know, when you enjoy <laughs> This is it. your actual life, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> this you is should show up every day. Yeah. Yeah. You, should, you should enjoy it, though. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. One thing that I've been struck by uh, as I become an old man is that uh, and you and I rapidly have, right? <laughs> <laughs> aging before your eyes. I have um, friends, uh, you know, who are in more corporate roles. Uh, well, <laughs> even more corporate, right? <laughs> even more than yes, than calling your brother at eleven. Right. Right. We can no, um, thing, which, but you know, people who have uh, risen to um, impressive levels, such as yourself, uh, you know, in, in their organizations. And one thing that I really didn't understand was the case at all is the extent to which you kind of can, like the higher up you get and the more people you have that you're in charge of, the more you can actually shape your team. So it's not as though uh, the company that you work for says, okay, every manager has to do things exactly no. like this, you know, and it has to always be the same and then here's your marching orders and you do it. That's kind of what it's like when you're an hourly employee in a lot of like customer sure. facing roles, I think, right? But the higher up you get, the more you yeah. have the yeah. not only the option, but you must. Like you have to. No one's gonna make yeah. a person. person who makes like sense. you said, there's no manager one oh one. It's just yeah. you I think some of that is inherent with the company culture. Sure. So it sounds very like the thing that you read when you're practicing for your first interview is what's the company culture? And you yeah. don't really know right. what that means. Yeah. And what I will say, I have thoroughly enjoyed my company now and also enjoyed RB and even CSX. All three of them had very different cultures and how I would have been the people manager at each place probably would have been very different. Mm -hmm. Different companies give you different autonomy or the ability to flex and have independence and, and at different stages. At this company that I'm at, it's very much about ownership. Again, going back to those original values that were in place when I was hired, which mm -hmm. again, I think they've rebranded. It was team spirit, <laughs> not teamwork, as an example. It's like, think oh. about the team, but get your job done. So, which is a little bit different than mm -hmm. at Hershey where they were Again, not a good or a bad, but yeah. it was more about like the hand holding to reach something at the same place, the decision together. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so here, for example, like if I want to add people to my team, maybe that might be something that I would have to get bigger approvals because there's a financial implication. Of course, yeah. But within the budget that I have or within the constraints that I have, I can take my team on big trips. I can, hmm. you know, yeah. do fun things for my team. We recently were uh, te customer team of the year out of all the teams in the country. Cool. That will Good only job. happen maybe once, so I have <laughs> yeah. to put it out there and let it live yeah. forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you picked an incredibly yeah. uh, appropriate time. venue. Yeah. Really interesting to know. Yes. <laughs> this is going on the internet. Yes. So. Yeah. The World Wide Web now. Right. Uh, yeah. so, so, but, but with that, like, you know, if you get like a little bit more discretion and a little bit autonomy to like go reward your team and do things like that. So there is a lot of autonomy even in just people motivation. Mm -hmm. That's and then also I get to decide and within my team how everything works. I think that's a good caveat though. Like I say that I could just go in and say you're all going to do it this way. Right. For me personally though, I'm constantly surveying the team and I'm constantly asking how everybody would like to do it. That's yeah. really interesting. Just to make sure that it works for the most people, because if nobody's buys in and, and getting their buy in, because yeah. if I don't get their buy in initially, then it's going to be a lot harder to, to get their investment yeah. of energy and time. Yeah, and I do the same when I sell to customers. 
I try to preview what I'm going to sell to them so they have some buy-in mm-hmm. and they're excited. Mm-hmm. So then when I go in and sell, kind of they've already seen a preview and they're more yeah. inclined to be yeah, interested. Yeah, they're more comfortable. And- do you think yeah. that your waitressing career had any impact? Hundred percent. <laughs> I, I really feel yeah. like I'm just like opening up this can of worms. Also in college, at one point, yeah. I did telemarketing. Oh wow! Uh, I've That's... done a lot of things to get to this place, but all of them yeah. had a very probably shouldn't hit the table. All of them had a very, sorry, yeah. noises. All of them had a very similar thread, which was just selling and. Instead of it just being selling, it was just this genuine belief in a product. Yeah. Like when you're a waitress, you don't sell like meatloaf if you don't like meatloaf. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Because you yeah. can't stand beside or if behind you saw it that. that there, you're like, that's been yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Right. Someone asked for meatloaf and you're yeah. right. <laughs> not my favorite, yeah. but what my favorite is. Right. Yeah. And so I think waitressing was an amazing job because every single time I got the chance to like change my pitch. Yeah. Every single time I got the chance, ah, oh, nobody so likes strawberry lemonade. All right, <laughs> I'm going Arnold Palmer next team. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Or I also would test myself and we would have like competitions within our team, either formally or informally, who could sell, you know, bagels faster or muffins faster yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, it is a good training ground if you want to get into sales, whether you think about it or not, because sometimes in my world, you get one shot once a year with some customers. Mm, Really good point. And if you miss it, (laughs) (laughs) like if you said strawberry lemonade and you should have gone to Earl Palmer, might not have been again. So so that's why like the research and the prep work and all that stuff is important, so. I think too, uh, a lot of people would have had those roles, those telemarketing roles, waitressing roles. Um, I I was a waiter myself, so Mm -hmm. I feel like, you always (laughs) You always feel like a kinship to other people. Totally. <laughs> like totally. It's, yeah. Um, but I think a lot of people, uh, certainly before they've gone into the real world, you know, they might look down on those kinds of entry level sure. positions. I really think, though, if you take the time, you put the initiative in to just notice what's going on around mm-hmm. you and to say to yourself, well, I am waiting tables today, whether it's what I want to do with my life or not, here I am. How can I do the best possible job? Oh, yeah. How can I learn? Absolutely. And then it carries you. Absolutely. And I. I really genuinely loved waiting tables. Yeah, me too. It was great. I, and I got like money every day as yeah, opposed yeah. to having to wait. And also a like month. the exercise. Like, you don't have yeah. to like, because you're constantly moving. Always. Your like, I, I genuinely liked the role. Yeah. yeah. And in telemarketing, a lot of people hated it, but I liked it because I'm not as afraid to, for somebody to tell me no because You've heard nobody it tells times. you no, <laughs> yeah. like getting called, yeah. like getting, being hung up on constantly. Yeah. So you learn to build a little thick skin and not necessarily take everything personally. Yeah. And right. all of those things prepared me just for like one of the things, again, in all of this like preparation of going into the real world, you hear about elevator pitches. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, that idea <clears throat> of like having a short thing to say quickly to people, mm-hmm. you know, to tell them what you're working on, who you are, or whatever. There's no quicker elevator pitch than like, hi, welcome to the restaurant. Like, here's our special. Or, hi, I'm trying to sell you on phone service, which was landline, also dates me. But like, (laughs) (laughs) long distance calling is only so much money. (laughs) So, yeah, (laughs) that was a thing, Google it. Uh, so, (laughs) So there's no better way, like every role, regardless of what you want to eventually do, whether it's that or something else, like, there, there is application. Sure. The retail sales role that I wasn't wonderful at, like I learned a lot in that role. And yeah. I, I had to meet a lot of people constantly and like deal well, with and, those kinds of things. And how many people would have sat and listened to the presentation by the guy who became your mentor right. and just been like, oh, it doesn't really apply to me. Everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In fact, one of the reasons it was easier for me to go up and talk to him was because he was just kind of standing there <laughs> after it was yeah. done. Wow. Like he wow. just was kind That's of amazing <laughs> to think of. Yeah. Like if you could have followed the path of every other person who went like right. up to today, you know what I mean? Yeah. You may have all gone to do incredible things, yeah. Yeah. but very different from but, what you did. Yeah, path, making that, right? making that yeah. choice. Yeah. Wow. Like approaching that person or not. Definitely. Huh. So well, here's the thing I was going to say before when I almost had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I feel like a common theme here is being direct and assertive and having like being engaged with like what you actually want and the idea that you're progressing to the next thing or, mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, and I feel like a lot of that is a certain mentality. Like you said, you're, when you were a waitress, you'd think, oh, can I sell these drinks? Can I do this? You know, where certain people, you know, it's a spectrum certainly, but there are people with more of an attitude of like, I'm just going to show up at mm-hmm. 5 p.m. and leave at 1 a.m. from this restaurant or whatever, because sure. that's what I have to do, versus, um, you know, I'm going to see what I can get done today. Right. I'm going to change yeah. my image or whatever. Um, 
And certainly that could be the person's attitude. It could be the way their boss is. If the, if the boss is terrible, it right. should be there, whatever. So um, there's two divergent things I want to ask about. I'll go with this one. Um, so <laughs> do you, and that can be apply obviously to a restaurant, it can apply to any company. Um, do you have any sense of, like if someone feels like they're in a company where they don't <laughs> have the chance to be in a good culture or, you know, make progress or, or work and be rewarded for their work or whatever. Is there any way to kind of, if you were applying for a job to think like, like you said, you love Hershey. So mm -hmm. did you know you loved them already when you started working there because you were able to do some research or was it like once you started that job, you got a sense of like, oh, like this feels like a place where if I put in my effort, I'll get back what I'm putting in, you know? Yeah. Or how do you find that, would you, do you think? So uh, I, I really appreciated the people with whom I interviewed just okay. as a starting point. I loved that I cared about Enactus, the group that I was in, and mm -hmm. they cared enough to go there and recruit yeah, from there. Yeah. So I knew that my values really were point. at least aligned at that level. Huh. The things that I thought yeah. were important to me, they at least thought they were important. They kind of met you there. So like, they met me were, there. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so that was very helpful. And then the people with whom I interviewed, I ended up leaving where I was to go to Hershey, and mm -hmm. it wasn't even the best job from a salary perspective, mm -hmm. it actually was, that was CSX. CSX, CSX yeah. Oh, yeah. So I left, and I had been at CSX for three years, mm -hmm. and I loved them too, yeah. and very different culture, but I really liked them. Mm -hmm. And I, the Hershey job was even less money, so it wasn't even money that drew me. It was the connection to the manager that okay. interviewed me. The individual person. The individual person. Super interesting. Like he personally. Yeah sold me on it. I knew I didn't want to go. I knew that I wasn't probably going to be good. Like I just had a gut feeling that I probably wasn't going to love that job. Thing, you yeah. You were yeah. short and not strong enough. We already knew you were short. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, in fact, to do the yeah. interviews, how I knew that I wasn't going to be great at it is Hershey tries to prepare you for it. Your performance of the combine. They actually try to avoid that situation because they take everybody on a field day while you're interviewing. Okay. So you do the this job. Is what you'd be doing. Yes. Yeah, so you works. see it for yourself. Uh, and I had these great ambitions, but I also in the back of my mind was like, how do you reach the top shelf? Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's not a metaphor. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> no, that actual shelf. Yeah. No, I mean like, <laughs> like do I carry a step stool? Like I feel like I might not be ready. Them two and we just <laughs> yeah. on to the other person. So yeah. But what I would say is in the interview, my final interview, and I had this yeah. room full of people and they asked me like, how did you feel the day was? I just like used as I was still nervous, it was a panel interview, it was me and several people. Hmm. I used that as an opportunity. They're like, and what did you not like about the job? Yeah. And I was like, well, this might be more of a me thing yeah. than a Hershey thing. <laughs> this is kind of but I didn't like my, it, I was short. Sure. Yeah. Wow. But it also wow. helped like the way that we're laughing, they all laughed because yeah. that wasn't a normal answer for yeah. But and it was an direct. honest answer. Like it's direct, you're, and, you're, yeah, you're, and not everybody has to be direct and assertive, <laughs> but being honest and honest being genuine very important. is yeah. probably the underlying thing. Sure. And you're going to stand everything. out. Yeah. yeah. If you can be direct and pleasant. Like That's even can be better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're yeah. very quickly sorted into another pile. Yeah. 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 If you... Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. So, and then the other direction I was thinking of going in was, like, you seem... And it's funny because... We went to the same high school. We weren't like directly in the same circle of friends, but we were like friendly, you yeah. know? And um, I had an impression of you as like a strong, assertive, like direct kind of yeah. person, you know, even then. Um, we're just, that, I think a lot of people feel like they'd like to be that way, like that it would be useful, but they're like, quote unquote, just not that way right already. Like, is that something that you ever cultivated? Were you kind of raised that way? Do you have like a, a memory, you know, earlier in your life yeah. of I kind of went, started down this path of like, I'm gonna yeah. not be afraid to talk to people or that? A similar thing, if you could work this into your answer too. <laughs> you know, was the, yeah. <laughs> but I'll take my answer out of the room. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when, was, when was the first time that you specifically said to yourself, I am a assertive, direct, honest person? I don't know that there was ever a time in my life it was a question. <laughs> like, like, as soon as you knew those words, you're like, that's me. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think um, I was bothered at the idea of type A when I learned what it was because I was so annoyed that people called themselves type A and they were like nowhere near what I really thought type A should have been. Like, I was like, like, awesome. like, like it's, you what, think that's type Yeah. The only thing that's worse than type, type A is like people yeah. pretending to be type A. Like, that's worse. So I think wow. it's twofold. <laughs> and I'll answer both questions. I yeah, think it's please. twofold. 
yes, I think there is something that's just in me personally, and that's like kind of my personality, which has both its mm-hmm. pros and cons. Yeah. But I do think you can cultivate it. So from who I am and like when kind of that when I knew, like at a very, very young age, You're I just... was very like there was no question. There was huh. a time yeah. one of my favorite stories was at four years old, I was at a daycare and the te- we went home and tattled because something was not great. Mm-hmm. And the teacher pulled me and my sister aside and said, Well, why did you go home and tattle? And my answer was, Well, if you didn't give me anything to tattle about, I wouldn't go home and tattle. Nice. Wow. So like I'm exactly. basically the same exact <laughs> person correct. thirty years yeah, later. Exactly. <laughs> I am the yeah, same nothing human. Has changed. So yeah, so some of that is who I am. <laughs> But what I've cultivated is a sense of tact and probably <laughs> learning <laughs> how to a semblance yeah. of it's it. It's like your like internal self and your external self. Yeah, yeah. I present yeah. this to the most yeah. successful. Yeah. yeah, I've like yeah. learned how to do it with a sense of other people. How it will impact other people. Sure, that not everybody has the right. exact same. And it it is off putting. Yeah. Like it can be off putting, <laughs> and probably mostly is. Not just can be. It probably is <laughs> off putting. And that. so I have to remember that like. For me, a lot of things are very transactional, mm-hmm. and or can be very transactional. Yeah, I'm sorry, like, by transactional, you mean I want to get something right done, now. make it yeah, happen. Right. This is efficient. So obviously, since it's the most efficient, we should all agree that this is yeah, the way we should no, do it yeah. five minutes ago. Why yeah. are we talking about <laughs> right. it? Yeah. But then I have to remember that people might have put people did put time and energy into the decision making. Sure, like, yeah. My way is not oh, always. I feel like you're not necessarily right. Yeah. Or yeah, you have to take into there, account yeah. other people's feelings and other people's yeah. like effort and energy that they put into it. Yeah. So how do they cultivate it? Maybe they aren't, if they don't flex that today, yeah. I think is like taking the time to constantly think about what their objectives are. And I do yeah, this with people so on important. my team. And like, so like, of course you have to do that. And a lot of people just like, it doesn't, I think some people don't have the sense that they can get to whatever those goals yeah. are. So what's the brain thinking? If you but don't believe that. Yeah. It's, it's not like you think, oh, if I think about it, I'm always torturing myself to do it. It's more someday, like, I would like to do what this. What difference will it make? If you don't yeah, think exactly. you're exactly. So yes. I'll just kind of focus on getting to the yeah. day. And I think that that's like a great example. Like on the weekend, if you know you have X, Y, and Z to do, you will try to build your weekend around it because you only have two and a half days yeah. to get it done. And I think with the rest of your life, if you know that you want to accomplish X, Y, Z goal, like think about it and how closer and faster can I get there, whether with the people who help me mm-hmm. or yeah. the resources I'm choosing to use <clears throat> and taking the time to carve it out. Even with my team today, I'm constantly reminding the team, how do we make sure we know what the objectives are and tell people this yeah. is my objective? Because <clears throat> a lot of times people at work will huh. ask me, can I get these sales numbers? And instead of me just giving the number, I will say, why do you need the sales numbers? Yes, yeah, yeah. Because they might think that's what they want, but then when they tell me what they're actually trying to achieve, yeah. I can give them this. That's like your mentor. Up, like, I was just going to say, this. no, those are right. the right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I see where you thought that. Yeah, yeah, so I try to take the time to not just tell people what I want, but why, and then ask other people. And then maybe you'll find out that you don't really right. want what you thought you did. Yeah, that's yeah. true, because you yourself might be in the position of thinking you need the sales numbers yeah. or whatever. And that might not and even be actually it. not even the right question. It's interesting you. because you're in the position right now, because you're not like the entry level where mm-hmm. you're simultaneously the person who's also trying to advance your own career and have yeah. her own, find her own mentors or whatever, and also doing it for other people. And totally. Like you said, when you, to be a good manager, you're trying to think, well, what was it like for me when I was that person? Yeah. It's an interesting kind of yeah. playing both sides of it. You know, and I think it's always system. important to think about how the people laterally next to you, the people below and above you are taking every situation in, you know, into account. Whether or not you've been there or not, like you should mm-hmm. think about how might they th- process it how might they think about it and can i make it easier for them or can i make it simpler to have this exchange be efficient but also pleasant or whatever i think that's very helpful sorry that reminded me of something that i wanted to uh, circle back to because it is kind of a sales thing too Mm -hmm. how can i make this a thing that you can say yeah let's do that totally yeah and uh you mentioned something that i think uh, i would also like to sort of highlight because i think a lot of people when they are in the high school college time period they're sort of turned off by the word sales. I think yes. a lot of people think of something that's Very unethical much. or or whatever. Um, and what you said about believing in a product, that to me is the key differentiator totally. between ethical sales and not. Yeah. If you really know that the thing you have. Start with something that you know. Right, is actually is useful. useful and, totally. would, and on top of that, it almost kind of sells itself at that point. Yeah, like, if you actually much really believe it and you have reasons and you, if you can communicate those. Yeah. Right. And be, you yeah. use the product, you know, or you use the service or whatever. Sure. But I think that goes back to even before you're looking at companies that you want to join, 
you, there should be a constant reflection, not just on your priorities, but like, what are my values? What's important to me? If a, an, econ, an environmentally sustainable thing, if mm-hmm. I, if I try to live waste free, I should probably not go work for a company that is not yeah, waste free, like that, right? yeah. but you know, my company has a, a carbon footprint plan to decrease, you know, their carbon footprint. That's something that resonates with me. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's important. If my company, you know, does philanthropic things, if those things are important to you, you should find companies that have them. There's yeah. a company for everybody out there. Yeah. Don't, you know, sense. and it's okay if you end up in one place first and you yeah, work your way to one. It might not be the first place you, you Yeah, like, yeah it doesn't important. have to be the perfect spot to begin with. In fact, yeah. the, in my opinion, you only find that great place to, to, to call home after you found some yeah. not home It's places. a bit like the speed over perfection. Very much. Like if you don't get out there and start yeah. doing stuff, how are you going to do something? Yeah. And, and then meeting your best people way. and, you yeah. know. Yeah. Developing maybe this mentor this is course. your oh sorry getting no, no, your no, LinkedIn no. profile filled out so yeah, yeah. And, my, <laughs> and following other people too sure. so you kind of yeah. have a pulse on what else is out there yeah and what jobs are out there too yeah like I'm a big like I'll go on LinkedIn I'll see a job title that I've never seen before and then I just Google it yeah yeah, yeah. for the next twenty minutes becoming an expert on yeah. that's a really good point too because yeah. so many people when they're in the like education phase. If you ask them, like, name all the jobs you can name, they could probably think of 20 right. jobs, tops. You don't doctor, even know. Doctor, engineer, you know, those, like, that's it. Yeah. Uh, but, right, in, in yeah. one space, in one company, yeah. one team, you can have dozens of job titles people totally. have never heard of before. And sales gets a bad rap, but I will say, I'm pretty positive, like, at this stage, it's just to keep other people out, because sales is amazing. Sales. <laughs> 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 I love sales and there isn't anything that you do in your life where sales wasn't a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. Like every single thing that you have. Marketing and just the ideas that you've developed. Also, I think a very useful thing uh, when you have done sales in any capacity and waiting tables for me certainly is a great example of that. You can also tell when someone else is trying to sell you, which is a yes, very useful thing yeah. to know. It, is. <laughs> yeah. it doesn't even mean that it's bad necessarily, yeah. but you when you can tell, it, like, oh, yeah. this person is trying to get me to believe something that maybe I wouldn't believe on it my own. It changes all of your interactions. Like, it yeah. changes when you call the cell phone company and you're trying to, like, change a feature. Yeah. And they're like, but... It, and or, they're trying to stop yeah. you. And you're like, I don't know. You're like, I, I can <laughs> yeah. almost read the script that you're exactly. reading. Like, I, I yeah. see you. So it, it just changes all of your interactions. And yeah. it helps you, for me, it helps you think about what could come next and like think about patterns before they happen sure so you're ready to even interact with your friends in a different way yeah. because you already are thinking about things I love sales it Me gets too. a bad rap you are <laughs> then, you're selling it gets into yeah. psychology and marketing and, and all of that stuff and, and yeah. building a team and you know, leading it. a team it's not technically sales but it is exactly the it's same part of absolutely the it's yeah. all part of it huh. so do you like it's funny because you, I think you said earlier with the um personality test thing mm-hmm. that like the conscious and unconscious things for you were like, exactly right? the same. <laughs> you knew you knew what you were doing yeah so um <laughs> when you were in in high school um yeah. did you have any did you think like i'm gonna be like a corporate like this you know i mean are you in the position you thought you were being no. did you have another i wanted vision, to go into know? political science like oh, okay i actually in high school that was your yeah, yeah i okay. was certain i was going to do political science i would go maybe into law or become like a community advocate or something. I would go into some public service like that, something like that I thought that I would go into. And when I went in to start to learn about political science and asking the questions and realized, oh wait, your entire world is on display. Like there's a, th- like you don't like have a, a lot of a personal person kind of, private yeah. And that's, stuff? was this, you were realizing you? that before, like yeah. Instagram. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> like, it has only become yeah. way worse. <laughs> Listeners, there was no Facebook in there. There was no Facebook. I, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that's yeah. unbelievable. There was no Facebook. It was too public for you before, yeah. <laughs> before everything was public, whether you wanted to be or not. Even this is too public. So yeah. when you said you did that research, was that while you were still in high school or was that once you got to college and looked into college. it? College. So I was okay. still in my um those like general kind of classes mm-hmm. those first like I, there weren't even a lot of general the classes but i was just asking yeah. questions and asking oh, the questions general and the, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah those quite but a lot yeah. early ones okay gotcha um like general education i don't know yeah yeah so i was just was asking questions very early on like i don't i mean maybe first semester i realized oh well you know what this a good not, yeah. yeah and i thought well you know what would be good marketing is good because marketing is like selling yourself Mm-hmm. but by way of a product. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. So I can still do, like, yeah. I realized that that was like my pivot. More like flexible lifestyle. Yeah. Sure thing. And, yeah. and I figured like, I didn't want, I still want to be involved and learn and do all those things, but 
I really just got excited about the idea of being in sales and like, and not even sales, like marketing, I thought is what I wanted yeah, to be yeah, in. Yeah. Like yeah. I was going to be a marketer. I was going to yeah. like do all the marketing things. And I didn't even know what that meant, <laughs> yeah, right. but I was going to be a marketer. Like yeah. 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 But it well, sounded flashy. And it's such a good blend too <laughs> yeah. of, I liked of it. the soft skills plus the data yeah. point, you know, all of the, the you know. I didn't even know that. Right. I just thought, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just yeah. thought marketing sounded sense. like a good mar- major in like the college of business. Sure. But then because it didn't have enough of the data, I ended up doing like a lot of the quantitative logistics stuff. So yeah, that huh. was very, cause I was at CSX, the railroad sure, and sure. they had a lot of like logistics. So I thought, oh, I'll just pick this up too. Yeah. But I really didn't know. I didn't know where I would land and yeah. Luckily, I just asked a lot of questions and I, had people guide me. It sounds like you're doing the stuff that I hope that the high schoolers that I hope are listening to <laughs> yeah. will do, which is to research, to find out. Yeah. You know, like there's so much information. I feel like there's and way more information there. we didn't even have the same there. level exactly. of Google. There's then. so yeah. much information now. It's so much, and it's which is just, a good thing and a bad thing. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yes. It's because you can, good information can be drowned out by yeah, not absolutely. that great information. Totally. But, but yeah, the opportunity to just find out like yeah. what it was actually like you know what what am i so kind of signed up for and might there be something that yeah that makes more sense so when you were in high school did you you know we do a lot of the um, people that we talk to obviously we get people ready for standardized tests so they got that on their minds yeah. you know they're thinking about test scores and admissions and all that stuff so do you remember a period around high school where you were like stressed out about that like were you worried about testing? I, were worried about admissions? sorry yeah. uh, um I just want to offer this one interruption. Uh, oh, please. If the, oh, no, because, this is not like you. So. No, yes. <laughs> You're such a respecter of the order. No. Um, do you... Uh, please feel free. Actually, I don't even have to say this because you're so direct. Like, yeah. been talking about, but if the answer is, yeah, I worried about that, it's actually not that important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Please feel free to say yeah, that. For real. Don't feel yeah. like you need to... Because I think a lot, of, a lot of people that we talk to it's like life and death. Like yeah, they really, sure. and the they think things, it's, it's yeah, 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 for them. Yeah. And one of the things you want to express is like, it's good to like meet this challenge head on, do your best, but don't, you know, don't operate on the right. assumption that if this doesn't go how you think it should go, your life is going to be right. Free. So, so was it something you worried about? Was it not like what was what memories do you have of that period? Was yeah. It, you know? So education was very important for my family. My mom was the first person to graduate high school in her family. Wow. So already. <laughs> if I could just make it through, yeah. like I was in a pretty good spot. Cool. My mom went back to college when we were younger and mm-hmm. only for the for a lot of reasons, but especially to drive home the importance of us going to college, mm-hmm. even though she had lived an adult life without college, wow. you know? So my wow. sister, so, three years older yeah. than me, uh, she went to school. Nobody told her going into school that get a degree that's connected with a job you might want to do. Absolutely. No one tells, I mean, I Nobody think people are just starting to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember some of Yeah, she's like, oh yeah, go to yeah. school. Yeah. You know, so she became a philosophy that. major with no intent to teach. So like, she's a great philosopher. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> which is something I admire. It's amazing. But it's not but commercially she viable. she in financial <laughs> management now. Yeah, okay. So like, there are things, you know, kind so of- So she different. found her way towards a technical thing that she yes. learned like a body of- and, But her philosophy yeah. has helped her tremendously. Of but oh yeah. For her, knowing that, it, it did change kind of the way that I approached testing and it oh, changed the so way. Because I knew, okay, you, yeah. well I need this test because this test, my admission is predicated on this test. Yeah, and right. what I end up going after is predicated on me doing well on this test. Yeah. I, we and I guess your, your perfectionist tendencies, yes. I'm sure, you know, will lead you to really. Totally. Yeah. But we didn't have the resources to do, uh, a lo- or I didn't even know. Since my mom <laughs> yeah. didn't go through that, the yeah. traditional kind of high school to college, mm-hmm. I didn't even know that like test prep was a thing. Yeah. Sure. Like it, you take the test and what you get is you what you get. That's what you get. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you because it almost feels like the point of the test should be that you can't prep. Right. Like, like, <laughs> like, 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 I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah. So, that's not how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I wish, I wish, yeah. That, yeah. In retrospect, um, yeah. yeah. So I, there was a ton of pressure. Oh, really? Okay. Because there was a lot of pressure yeah. because it was like 
for us, it was my opportunity to change the setting that I was in. It was my mm-hmm. opportunity to kind of change the trajectory of where I would go. Yeah. Did you feel like familial? Like, did your family explicitly say this yes, is so important? There were not. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 I, it was like so explicit that it was implicit. Like, it was so. <laughs> <laughs> Just go all the way around. Yeah. We're not even going to talk about like, this because everyone knows yeah. what we would all say if we right. talk about it. It wasn't yeah. like. It was, there was no contention, no like discussion. Yeah. And it yeah. was just understood. Uh, huh. So there was a lot of stress, like a pressure. Yeah. But I think by the virtue of the type of school that we went to, too, that kind of was like inherent in just Yeah, everything. it's the environment that you're in. And yeah. But regardless of what anyone tells you around you, like you, I personally had to like find that motivation. Like mm-hmm. only you wake yourself up, yeah. hopefully, you know, to, to get ready and go yeah. and like bring the pencil or whatever you bring yeah. now. I don't even yeah. know. Like, <laughs> your retinas. Yeah. 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 It's all yeah. <laughs> so, VR yeah. yeah, so there was a lot of pressure, but for me it was just another step because I knew I had to yeah. do it. Like I knew that I had to do it because I planned to go to college. And so you did it without uh, preparation. Yeah. Right? Okay. And were you able to, <clears throat> you know, reach whatever you decided I, sh- I wanted, you know? No, because I'm a perfectionist and <laughs> I still remember what score you got and I know that it's not what I got. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's been like anybody 15 in your years. school who got like a better score. Yeah. Eight, <laughs> People who got perfect scores. <laughs> I was not one of them. Man, yeah, that's <laughs> and the 23 who got National Merit Scholar yeah. also was not one of them. <laughs> but, <laughs> so yeah, not that I'm thinking about it, you know, for right. years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but I it's so interesting to say, like, here you are with this very uh, accomplished career. Yeah. yeah. People I feel like it's just yeah, underneath it's you, you know, looking up to you, that you're molding their lives and, and mentors who invested their time in you. Yeah. No one stops to say, hey, before I meet you for lunch, yeah. did you break 1500 on your You know, like, no one. I mean, cares about yeah. that, right? I mean, yeah, more or no, less nobody, nobody did. I think it would have maybe changed my starting point. It, sure. it could have changed like the conversations earlier on. Maybe yeah. like maybe different companies could have been interested, or maybe I would have been on a different list that had my yeah. picture in the hallway, like you did. <laughs> <laughs> been, yeah. Which would have served a great purpose yeah. for me. <laughs> I didn't know until now that you had your picture. I, you know. <laughs> I didn't. We, uh, because, in my day, they wrote our names on a plaque. Right? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 You probably walked by the plaque. The plaque. I might have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Either way, source so subject. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I'm, I'm, it would have been good to have had a mentor share like there is a way that you can tackle it without being so intimidated because i was yeah, so sure, very intimidated sure, by it yeah. still did you um i always feel like i have to discuss this very carefully because so with like the guidance counselors or, or whatever those kinds of situations uh you, you may have had available to you i often find speaking to clients that uh they don't really get what I would consider to be effective counseling. I want to emphasize it's not really because the guidance counselors aren't good at it or don't know what they're doing. It's more a question of overwhelm. There isn't enough time for each counselor to know each kid. Also, each kid, you know, you're 15. What do you know about? Right. So, and do you even know that you're like allowed to just go make an appointment with that person? A lot of people don't even realize. So there's there's, there's many, many uh, things that keep it from being, I think, as rewarding as it ought to be. But I want to ask, was it rewarding for you or did you... Did you utilize those resources? Did you feel that they were helpful? Did you, you know, have that go? I did not personally utilize a lot of those resources because it was probably so intimidating and you have a million other things and I was sure. in all these other projects. Like, you Also, know, you're assuming that you know. Like, yeah, you think you know you've got to do this, so why If they haven't told me it's not a yeah, thing, then right. like, I guess yeah. it won't show up that random Thursday. <laughs> why are all these like, pictures like, in the hall? Yeah. Right. It's not they important. did tell me that was important. <laughs> 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 Nobody like I didn't I personally didn't have like a sit down of you know what college do you want to go to and here are some paths that you could take probably would have been beneficial knowing that like two people before me had never gone and it wasn't like a very long history of that Mm -hmm. probably would have been very beneficial but I didn't have that sure and but luckily because I you know I always had some kind of job like I I still was able to look around me and kind of see (laughs) the people who valued that versus they didn't and Mm -hmm. you know did it play out in their life or whatever but that wasn't my personal experience to have yeah the school was so our school was so just focused on that anyway that you kind of there was enough focus in your regular academics that you were probably going to make it there 
whether or not somebody sat you down and talked about yeah, it. Yeah, that's a good point. Everybody so I didn't have that one-on-one -on -one touch that point, but we were anyway. all kind of moving yeah. that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How did you uh, ultimately decide which school to attend and how many did you apply to? Yeah, what was that whole process like as so, far as, you know? So, very candidly, I chose not to apply to one school just because I felt like everyone was going there yeah. and I didn't want to go where everyone went. Yeah. Probably you guys went there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like it. <laughs> Just statistically, we probably, yeah, so probably did. did. Yeah. So I knew that I didn't want to go there. Okay. I initially, like, because this was so new to me, mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm going to go to, <laughs> looking back, it feels very silly, but this yeah. was like real world for yeah, me. Sure. Looking, I wanted to go far away. And I thought like mm -hmm. I would go up <clears throat> north somewhere. And I was in the process of doing applications to go anywhere up north. I don't know, mm -hmm. even I even looked at an all women's college at one point, mm -hmm. which probably wouldn't have worked for me. And I went to do that. And then I had a trip up north to visit family and I felt snow. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and I was like, glad I didn't spend application <laughs> money on that. Yeah. So I, really I yeah. retracted those applications before. That is yeah. not how you should make decisions. But if you're like me, but, but, but for I mean, me, like I knew that my quality of life would be important to yeah, me, sure, sure. and I didn't have like a heavy coat. It's like, so, yeah. <laughs> I did not have or know where to acquire. Right. How do you reach the top shelf? What do you need? Yeah. Yeah. I know my limitations and I flex right. where yeah. I'm strong. Yeah. Uh, so my sister was at UCF and so I applied at UCF and got in, mm -hmm. was there for a year. It was not for me. Okay. I was not because it was huge wasn't good for me. Mm -hmm. I got lost, like mm -hmm. I did it. Like it was not, I was, I didn't love. Yeah, Great school. Experience. Yeah, my sister, yeah. my husband, they both went to UCF, swore by it, love it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's I another transfer. important thing too. There is no one size fits all. No, yeah, there's not C school everyone. The fact that one person through. doesn't like it doesn't mean everybody's yeah. gonna yeah. like it or vice versa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't love it. Uh, she loved it. And I've since like encouraged, you know, my cousin to even look at it. Like, but yeah. it wasn't for me. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but I ended up transferring back to University of North Florida and I loved it. Mm -hmm. I think I liked that there wasn't a football team sure. because I wasn't really yeah. good at participating in those sorts of activities. Right. Yeah. <laughs> know your strengths, do you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I appreciated that I didn't have yeah. to like pretend to know what was happening. Yeah. <laughs> I keep track of that. Yeah. Um, so load uh, off your butt. Yeah. 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 And so, and it was smaller school. Sure. So there were smaller classes mm -hmm. and I know that for me, like I wasn't as good as doing some of what was new then the digital classes, sure. like watching class on Online a TV stuff. Yeah. Yeah. that I would have picture in picture watching Netflix. Right. Actually, oh, that yeah. wasn't, not we were the not Netflix because they were yes. still sending us yeah. DVDs. Oh yeah. That's oh yeah. Nice. I saw it in a different way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody online recently was like, I just told a 20 year old that I used to get Netflix in the mail and I think he thinks I was making it up. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> God, that is yeah. what used to work. Yep, yep that yeah. was a thing. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> again, aged ourselves. Right. So, yeah. I, um, I just liked UNF. So, sure. that's how I ended up choosing where I went, mm -hmm. and I absolutely loved it. Didn't apply to a ton of schools. In retrospect, that probably was maybe putting all my eggs in a few baskets. Right, maybe yeah, I right. should have thought that through, yeah. Yeah. but uh, but it worked out. That's great. And I also wanted to stay in Florida because I had bright futures. That's such a huge thing. Yeah, so, not every state has, but there's a lot of programs that you know reduce yes. tuition or whatever if you stay in state. Or, so that know, was a yeah. huge, especially knowing that, like. I, we didn't have a ton of extra financial sure, resources yeah. to be able to just pay for you most know most people. Anything. Yeah, yeah, most people don't. Yeah. Which is like that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. and I and I didn't know enough about student debt, but I knew that I didn't want a lot of it. Yeah, right? it doesn't yeah. sound so great. Right. <laughs> yeah. So well, it's one of those students part. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. The, the debt part scares yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I ended up at UNF, graduated from there, and loved it. That's really cool. That's awesome. And. Um, how many times has the fact that you graduated from UNF as opposed to UCF or any other school, has it ever explicitly come up like in your life since then? Uh, no. Like applying I, for a job or discussing a promotion, does anybody ever say, where'd you go to school? And yes, like, yeah, they uh, always yeah. ask, and mm -hmm. then they'll always go, oh, the Gators? And I'll go, no, actually, <laughs> <laughs> UNF is University of not Florida. <laughs> it's actually University yeah. of North Florida, but it's also not Florida, not the school you're not, thinking not of. The other, uh, yeah, Think yeah, of yeah. every Florida school you know, and it's yeah. none of those. It's the one right after <laughs> the list, yeah. And so I will say, I was a little nervous that I went to a smaller school that didn't mm -hmm. have some of the same notoriety. Mm -hmm. 
especially because it didn't have the same athletics. Yeah. But I used, I was then determined to find out what were they good at. So then if anyone asked, oh, I could yeah, go, good oh, well, you Actually, know what they are great. good at. Yeah, yeah. They're the, the Ospreys, right? Yeah. yeah. And they were decent basketball players. I think. That was nice. I don't know. I don't know. We interrupted the Osprey Panama. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. It's, so, yeah. So I, I was a little nervous because I think especially – the high school that we went to, there was like a lot of like, if you don't go to absolutely, you know, sure. Harvard or Yale, there's or even more of that doctor, probably now. Yeah, it's so you're not stressful, school, yeah. and like that's I probably wasn't going to go to those schools. I didn't well, even. It was cold for one thing. It was cold. Exactly. I definitely yeah. wasn't going yeah, where exactly. it was cold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the irony is, yeah, I ended up moving. What if they kept the coats on the top shelf? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. Anyway, that. Sorry, the irony. Yeah. I ended up moving to right, Pennsylvania to eventually, yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, <laughs> beating heart. Of yeah. The, yeah. So I, yeah, I, it definitely came up, but in my head, I kind of thought that one school or another could be discounted or favored more. But at the end of the day, like my work ethic and my skill set and my desire to learn, even if I didn't always know all the things, probably got me way further than the five second conversation about like exactly what school you went to. And also the person's like, oh, the Gators, they don't even know. (laughs) (laughs) You don't know either. Great hey, school in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah that's the one. Yes, exactly. <laughs> one school in Florida. Really yeah. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> Believe yeah. it or not, there were a lot of those conversations. Yeah. So. Uh, sorry, I just noticed um, we are not like super close to the time that we have, but at the rate that we are speaking, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, I kind of wanted to shift towards a couple of things I wanted to make sure we covered before. Well, by all is that okay? Let's cover yours. This things. feels like a natural. No, this is super natural. Yeah, Sorry. we should stop everything and talk about it. <laughs> yeah. This feels very natural. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, go for it. Okay. So, yeah. um, I wanted to address the role of uh, technology. I mean, which is obviously a very broad topic, but. Um, how have you seen that shift from the time we've already mentioned a few different ways as consumers, you know, mm-hmm. the Netflix and Google and whatever didn't exist in their current forms. How have you seen that shift within your own career at all of these different companies? And are there specific, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Please go. <laughs> yeah. So great example. If I were to be a retail rep today, I might like it a little bit more because when I was a retail sales rep, we didn't get iPads. I thought you were going to say eye patches. No. Like, Where's this going? We didn't get those either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if they're giving those out. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. So, we didn't get pads. those. Sorry. Yeah. We did not get iPads. So think of all the stuff you can fit yeah. on an iPad. Sure. Imagine getting all of that in two, three inch binders. Oh, wow. So yeah, every single store around. that I yeah. had to go to, I had to carry these massive binders. <laughs> with my little Hershey polo on and carry these binders. Yeah. I would like put it in a shopping cart. And when I'm already like trying to carry boxes I can't carry, like yeah. it was a lot <laughs> yeah. to think about. So simple things like that to also, then a lot of it was just based off of, you know, me saying, these are the stores I went to, this is the info we did now. Technology allows us to find out like how long call times are at the stores, how quickly they're moving in and out, where in the store they're at at different times. There's yeah. so much information. It helps us analyze huh. uh, the data, for example, in my job today. It helps me analyze how people are shopping, why. We have some studies where we can see where people's eyes I just move, heard of that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, Whoa. or we have, it used to be just heat maps where we would look at where people walked and you could like kind of take a heat gun. Yeah. Now there's stuff that's, in all of the corporate offices who do things like we do, they will have these massive uh, virtual set rooms, which looks like it's a like real a store. Grocery store right? Yes. Yeah. And then they'll bring wow. people in and say, okay, you have $20, go spend it. Hmm. And so technology allows hmm. us to do things faster and think quicker. And then on the tail end, though, that means we have to be faster with Excel. I mean, I'm like, use Excel all day, every day. Yeah. We have to be faster in like, you know, computing that information and analyzing it. And sometimes having so much data can be a little overwhelming. Sure. So it's like constantly thinking about what am I trying to get to the objective <clears throat> so I can take all that data and make something useful out of it. It's changed a lot, yeah. but mm. the underlying theme is still the same of like trying to sell stuff or trying to make a good experience for the customer or whatever, whatever it is. Where did you learn to use Excel? Was that something you did in college or picked so up? So I actually was fortunate <laughs> enough that I had a, a couple Excel classes 
but there was no in college, but there was no training like on the Mm. job training. Sure. Because even though I had Excel classes, I very, very vividly remember my first true Excel project (laughs) at CSX. Yeah. And I was doing this project with, I don't know, a few thousand rows and it involved Mm. sums and I was clicking each individual cell. Well, turns out there are formulas and they do that for you. Sure, yeah. And I had a notebook on the table next to me and was like computing it with a calculator on a notebook oh because I, I had had these classes, but I didn't yeah. practically use them. Sure, yeah, sure, sure. And you even though we did, and, and you do yeah. exercises and you do them, you type some and you do it, but it's not the same as when somebody gives you a project and you know it's tied to real life money. Yeah. Or it's tied to real life just sense work. Like, let me get each one of these. So let me just <laughs> yeah. make sure it's right, because I don't actually trust this Excel thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they vetted this. I don't know it's 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 before, but I'm yeah. 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 sure. Yeah. Uh, so, and I remember early on in my career, like this was still my internship at CSX, my boss had said to me, like, it's, it's taking you a lot longer than I thought it was going to be taking you. Like, yeah. what do you think? And I said, well, if you don't mind, like, I can show you at my desk. Yeah. And he's like, Which oh, no. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But that's such a better answer than, oh, I'll go faster. Yeah. Like, you, know, yeah. you didn't try to cover it no. up. You were just like, I just was like, I think come I'm watch me. Like, and this yeah. was also yeah. before we didn't out. have laptops. We had, like, the tower. So he had to come to my desk because I couldn't yeah. bring in my laptop. Because technology <laughs> used to be plugged into something. Right? <laughs> right. Exactly. You had to stay yeah. there. So I just remember thinking, like, I'm so it yeah of course I'm summing yeah, it right. obviously yeah. I'm adding a thousand rows do you want to see my notebook yeah, right. yeah. wow I'm the girl with the notebook I don't yeah. know. so <laughs> but I, it was just like this thing that clicked for me so now even you know I was just teaching somebody something in Excel recently like general rule this is Excel and everything else if something seems like it's taking too long yeah, there's a better way mm, right yeah. someone general has run into this problem before and they <laughs> yeah. probably come up with a and they invented right. Excel and, right. and it's probably on yeah. YouTube actually yeah. like, oh, yeah. no, like legitimately sure. there are Which we solid. also used to get in the mail but so yeah so that was kind of like a, a big aha uh, for me earlier yeah. I feel like so many people are terrified to ask questions yes because asking questions by definition, is an admission that you don't know something and people well, feel like protective and, and defensive and like, ah, if I say You it, and I, I have talked about this a lot and I, I'm curious to know if you've seen it in the people who are younger than you. Um, but so many people come up through the education system now and they are literally afraid not to know something. It's hard. Absolutely. It's a huge reflection of you as a failure. Yeah, exactly. if you don't know something. Totally. Which I think... Tell me if I'm wrong, but you'd quite rather the opposite. You'd rather that yeah. a person is like, hey, I don't know how to do whatever. Because you know for sure people don't know things. Right. <laughs> Especially if they're going to learn. What yeah, because yeah. yeah. you can't and fix think, it if you don't know. Quite frankly, I think it happens at almost every stage. Like I have people, I have worked with people at levels above me who also didn't know, but because they're above me and they don't know, like you can almost see their reluctance to admit that yeah. too. I think it happens yeah. at every level. Yeah, sure. Sure. And I think that's yeah, why that more than anything, it's so important that especially when you're new to a role or new to assignment, you ask all the questions. That is yeah. the one time it's fair game yeah. Like, yeah. for everybody. That's yeah. a really good point. It's super, super fair game. It's always good, but especially in the beginning. Yeah. And get them all out. And then later on, if you didn't ask it, someone will go, well, they did ask a million questions, so it's fine that they <laughs> right? missed this one. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're trying, like they're letting it down. Yeah. yeah they made so the much effort, of it is yeah. like, make an effort. Yeah. Even if it's not the right effort, yeah. just make the effort. Yeah. Ask the questions, even if they sound what you think is silly. It's yeah. probably a good chance somebody else asks the same. And thing. I think you can almost tie this. I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Actually, you can almost tie that back to academic uh, pursuits like science and math. If you study the history of those things, it was just people asking very clumsy questions for a very yeah. long time. Yeah, and then they started to realize, oh, actually, you can kind of like formalize this, and yeah, now we can get something. Now we have thing. slightly better questions to ask. Yeah. You know, but that's that iterative process. I was just thinking about that because a lot of people, I think, dismiss the idea that there's any value of academics for like a business. But I don't think that's true at all. Like, no. It's a really good example of one no. way that's not I true. think some of the, it goes back to even like group projects, like even the function of group projects yeah. and how school are <clears throat> mirrors yeah. the function. Like some of it is just about like the way that you think or the way that you problem solve. You know, when you had a math test, you only had so many resources, you know, and so like that's what you use. In this world, in my world in particular, I only have so many places that I can find sales data. So I have to go back to that sales data. Like you have what you have in front of you and like mm-hmm. you still have to solve a problem. Yeah. So I think academia still finds its way sure. everywhere. Of course. Even if you don't want to admit it or you don't recognize it or right. you know, yeah, right. validate it. Um, do you, if I could go back to Excel for a second. 
Do you use other uh, Microsoft like Office kinds of products as well? And um, do you guys ever use like any of the other kind of competitor things to Excel? Do I've noticed that yeah. there's like a kind of an age break below a certain age, everyone uses Google. Above a certain age, everyone uses Microsoft. Yeah. Have you seen that, or is that not accurate? Yeah. So we use um, so we use PowerPoint. Like everybody uses PowerPoint. Like and and then also when you get to a certain level of using PowerPoint, you don't even call them PowerPoint presentations. You call them decks. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's <laughs> yeah. real official. That's <laughs> when you know. Like doing a deck. <laughs> yeah. uh, so <laughs> so we use decks, which is PowerPoint. We do a lot of that. We do a lot of linking Excel to PowerPoint, so you don't have to do the same work twice. You just nice. like do something. It just like updates itself. Yeah. Real real yeah. fan of real fan of efficiencies. Nice. Yeah. Word, obviously, use a lot of that. Lately, yeah. I've been working my way into using OneNote. Mm -hmm. I actually very, <laughs> very vividly remember when I was given a CD on UCF campus to try mm -hmm. OneNote. I remember this too. New <laughs> yeah, they were pushing that on everybody. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, try this new yeah. thing, OneNote. <laughs> and I remember trying to be like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> so much of OneNote. Know. Thank you. Yeah. I have a notebook. <laughs> exactly. I got. Still right so here, much yeah. of those note-taking things hinges on the ability to carry it's a device. The connectivity. Yeah. Yeah. And back you then, yeah. yeah, exactly. You, could, you would just run back yeah. over. <laughs> just write everything in your notebook. Just like, get back to your computer. <laughs> internet yeah. window. Right. Mail it to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's so easy. Yeah. Yeah. So I've recently been adapting it because there is so much. And within my team, I have a bunch of sub-teams and there's so much going on. And I have you know, downstream priorities. I have priorities coming from upstream. So like the ability to control find a sure. word okay. in a bunch of, that is way is easier thing. than like looking Absolutely. through 3,000 yeah. pages. So, and they can also work with handwriting yes. recognition. Yeah. You can yes. scan written things and it so can I find like, it. Or, or oh, like one of my, th I'm very visual. So if something comes up and I just want to like draw it, I'm like one of those annoying people who's like, mm -hmm. let me draw it for you. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, also like I can do it on like an <laughs> iPad and then send it to you so you yeah. remember right. my drawing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna hold on. Oh yeah, I was in the restroom. That yeah. was, that was thing. That's right. Great. That's right. Yeah. Did you have my drawing from six months ago? Yeah. So, so one note. A lot of people are using that more. I see that to be more common because then you can take screenshots from meetings, from decks, and like put it all in a pretty yeah. case. And then outside of that, we use a ton of other third-party type things. Other than Excel, I have worked with companies, and our company does in different departments, not in mine, mm -hmm. like Tableau and different like Excel type. Which is a data visual. Yeah, it's like channel, a visual yeah. kind of. There's a, there's several others that, that people use that are kind of like Excel, but like make it pretty, like sure. infographic type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. I don't personally use those. I have in past jobs, yeah. but I use a lot of syndicated data. So like Nielsen and IRI that tells what people shop, how they shop it. Yeah. <clears throat> You kind of think about it like what the ratings are for TVs. It's the TV shows. It's or I don't even know if they do it for Netflix, but yeah. <laughs> probably similar. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the same thing. Like everything you everything you purchase at a store, believe it or not, goes into this massive database, sure. and people like me and my team will analyze it to understand your buying patterns. Yeah. So we use a lot of stuff outside of Microsoft Suite, but the Microsoft Suite for sure. So um, we've. I heard a lot at um, like educational conferences and that sort of thing of companies being uh, less interested in like four year degrees necessarily or you know those are obviously still very important in a lot of areas but there's starting to be a shift in certain um, certain industries where there's interest in like being having some kind of a uh, Microsoft Office like certification sure. or some other you know what I mean so or the, a demonstrated kind of, skill set in a particular yeah way. so yeah. as opposed to a degree from a college that has to do with you know gen ed and everything else something that's just can you use this software or use oh. this system or whatever so is that something you encounter a lot like in a, when you're looking for people to join your team you know what I mean do you yeah so my team in particular I tend to have more people who are mostly more like tenured in their career mm -hmm. so for us I'm at this stage, a lot of it's ne not necessarily as much education based, but experience based. Mm -hmm. So you know they can do it. So you already kind of have tried and true results. Yeah. You don't necessarily need to see the certifications, mm -hmm. although it's a bonus certainly if they have that sort yeah. of thing. Sure. I think what can become a challenge, and you would just have to look at this for any of the new applicant tracking systems, like when you go to apply for jobs online, which is different than how we even did it when we were you know, sure. applying for our first jobs. So many things are all digital and on, online. Oh, yeah, yeah. So now, whether you check a box of this certificate or this degree may mean the difference of making it to the next stage. Yeah. So You're good, bad, or indifferent, it's kind of a filter. Yeah, so yeah. all I would say is, like, if 
if it's one thing and it's a certificate, make sure you click through and make sure you can click on the certificate and that show it. There's a box it. for it, basically. Yeah, it just go look it. for yeah. it because That's true, yeah. that makes if you click sense. onto the next button and you haven't looked for it or you didn't put it in the notes, they might not know that you had it. Sure. So sometimes don't the systems limit us and limit our abilities to right. show all, yeah. all of our good stuff. Which is, I think, also just a general problem enterprise-wide in software Oh, I'm sure. Solutions. It's got to be. Software doesn't always reflect the reality of like what everything. can actually yeah. be done you know, by anybody. Totally. Huh. Do you, um, when people are coming, say, out of college or out of an internship uh, into your company now or any of the companies that you've worked at before, what, what is it expected? What did those companies expect that the person would know? Just broadly, like, yeah. were they supposed to know how to use all the software already? Were they supposed to know what category management meant? No. What were they? What were they supposed to when be? When you're able to coming do? in and joining a company, it is understood that you have whatever education or vocational experience that you have. You are not going to be an expert. That's why you're being hired often for some level of entry level job. And entry level yeah. does not is not negative. Right. It's just earlier it's the on. First step. It's yeah. the first step. And people, so, yeah. in most companies and everyone that I've been a part of. Those first jobs, they are well aware that they are going to assess what your skill sets are and then help guide you after that. Mm -hmm. Like there are very few op chances where you'll be somewhere and they just are like, oh, you're on your own for the rest of your career. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's it. You apply for that job. That you are now doing that front. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Forever yeah. and ever, that's your yeah. job, period. So yeah, yeah. I, no, I don't think there's an expectation. I think a lot of companies, if you are not necessarily sure and you have a general idea of where you want to go, a lot of companies have grad programs or yeah. you know, you know, like uh, management training programs or training programs that help show you a slice of mm -hmm. every part. Mm -hmm. And that's very helpful if you kind of are not sure or even if you are sure, but you just want to validate it. Sure. So I don't think there's any ever an expectation that you know it all. And it's totally okay that you don't because you won't. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there core skills? You mentioned, for example, um, soft skills, which is like interpersonal. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know that. Yes. I know that, but yeah. they might not know. Some other so, guy out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody <laughs> else. Yeah. yeah. So the sort of soft interpersonal skills uh, are certain, certainly something that you've mentioned. Um, are there other, say, broader skills like, uh, I don't know, writing ability or hygiene or just like <laughs> those kinds of things that you like, okay, this person coming out of college doesn't know how we do stuff. But I do hope that they can read a 500 word email and get me back something that's like intelligence. Is yeah. that kind of something that's. Yeah, that's I would say the number one thing is really just like the ability to listen to what people are saying around you. Like, if you start any role, and this kind of just is in any situation, mm -hmm. like, you should never go in with you going into a new situation, you should never go in with the assumption that you know more than anyone around you, mm -hmm. even if you might. Yeah. Like never assume go with that, that assumption. Assume that you don't yeah. and, and listen and observe and ask questions because if you're listening, it might, and, and I write questions down ahead or type questions down or whatever anybody's doing <laughs> these days. Yeah. But like I prepare questions ahead of time that I might have in my head. And then as I'm listening, like I will constantly cross them off. So like listening is super important and it will help you think about what might be next or whatever your next question is. Um, I think beyond that, it's just really constantly just, checking back and reflecting and this is for anybody in any role like the ability to have the skill to like think okay what am i doing what am i accomplishing or what's my task at hand that's super important believe it or not uh, the hygiene type stuff i think what's more important is like the professional disposition and like look around your area and see like attire for example like how are the people around? You're just super <laughs> calling me out. We don't normally like, like interview it. somebody. And there's gonna be a camera. Like don't just wear a gray shirt. shirt. No. Yeah. For example. At least it's uniform. And afraid of. Uh, yeah. uh, anyway, please go no, ahead. No, but I, I think yeah. it, is, it is something that's a little nerve wracking. So sure. like if you're about to yeah. start a new role and you don't know, do they wear polos at the office yeah. or yeah. are they wearing like V-necks or like jackets? You should yeah. either ask, and it's okay to ask and not know. Mm -hmm. But then also like look around you. And if what they told you was different than what you notice, sure. then just observe. So, so much of it's just observing and it can be something simple like attire, but it can go, you know, as far as to like avoiding being in an awkward position where you're asking questions that were just answered. Yeah. yeah. Like you don't want to be that person. Yeah. Oh, God, I've done that. The other half yeah. is the worst. <laughs> I have too. The important half of asking so many questions is to then yeah. listen to the answers. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And write it down or notate it, however you yeah. do it, if that's You mentioned um, 
earlier the idea that there weren't like a ton of role models for you specifically with respect to higher education because it was like a new sure. thing in your family and you weren't sure but the, the school was you know, pushing you in that direction yes. but beyond like that the details you weren't really sure of. Um, did you have similar issues when it comes to, for example, when I think professional disposition, I have an idea of what that means now. Mm-hmm. Was, it's very different. I mean, I'm not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not this. But I do like abstractly yeah. what it means. I'll tell you that. But it's very different from what I would have thought it was, you know, at, at an sure. earlier time. And honestly, if I think how I kind of came to my current idea, which may not be accurate of what professional disposition means... A lot of it's like TV shows. <laughs> like I saw a character <laughs> who really seemed to have it together, yeah. and I was like, "Hey, what's she doing?" You know, like yeah. then I can, you know, like I can take parts of it, and and you sort of build yeah. that model for yourself. Where did your idea come from? Was it influenced by mentors? Obviously, yeah. looking around was part of it, but like where, if you break down what you think yeah. of now as that, where did the pieces of that? Come yeah. From? So I had one mentor in particular, and she was a vice president of human resources, and every day she wore a jacket. So I was like, every day I'm gonna wear a jacket, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it sounds so simple, but I but do that's the think, kind of thing. yeah, and, and I think at that time is like, I don't know, I was 19, 20 years old. At that time, my other peers weren't wearing jackets, right. and so it sounds so silly, but because I wore a jacket, I sat straighter, and like I was. Even if it's only, it was in my purely head. for you, and it was, but, and, and it was also, for me. This yeah. kind of goes back to sales and, and auditioning too. Yep. If the person who's always asking questions and working hard right. also is visually distinct, like, oh, yeah. she's always wearing the jacket. Yeah. The jacket girl always asks the questions. Totally. Like, that's actually pretty yeah. useful, right? Yeah. Totally. And, and what I will say is, like, it became, like, this terrible running joke within my own family because, like, every time they saw me, I was buying these collared shirts that didn't fit me, these ugly jackets that, like, I was, like, much more petite than I am now, so they didn't really fit. This whole, like, jacket that's, like, pulled, like, this didn't exist then, so, like, all my jackets were long. Yeah. Like, I, I, the disposition might not have been great, but, like, I was at least attempting, and I was yeah. trying, and so... And again, and even it, if it's just your own, like, reinforcing your right. mentality, this is important to me, I want yeah. to be, like, this totally. person, like, this... And I yeah. eventually realized, okay, it isn't about the jacket, it isn't about the shirt, yeah. but it helped put me in the frame of mind of, like, once I started modeling what Isabel was wearing, then I would say, okay, well, how is Ms. Isabel acting in meetings? Or like, yeah. what is she doing? How does she command respect? You start to notice stuff like yeah. that. And you realize things, yeah. for example, a big thing I realized, the most influential people in the room yeah. are often the quietest ones. Totally, and she always was. Right, and I'm talking And I wasn't. But like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's something, if you didn't yeah. stop to look, you would never think that that's how it totally. is. Totally. So I really would find myself, and, and in that case it was attire, but then it eventually became how she handled meetings and how she spoke with the people who reported to her. But I really did pay a lot of attention, and I, I still connect with her only on Facebook now, but yeah. like, I still yeah. connect with her because I have a lot of respect for her, mm. and I learned a lot from just watching her. Do you think she realizes how much you patterned? I eventually, years ago, went out of my way and sent her, and I had, I don't know, I think I watched a TED Talk, and I just was like, <laughs> I need what to go tell moments? these yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like sent a lot of emails out. Yeah. Did not get a lot of responses. <laughs> <laughs> but I send a lot of messages out. Uh, but it's cool because you just never know. Like one of the people who I used to have regular lunches with, he's now the CEO of United Airlines. Whoa! Like, My and I went off last United Airlines. yeah, like it's yeah, it's pretty it crazy. crazy. And I remember yeah. <laughs> well, this was a guy who he was involved in the interns at CSX and. I saw him and saw an opportunity and like asked yeah. him like the worst that can happen is they tell you no. Yeah. He didn't allow me to go to lunches with him and vice versa and so it was really nice. Wow. And then years later I'm on a plane and <laughs> like hear these announcements and I look and there's an uh, email a uh, letter from Oscar Munoz and it's like wait, wait it's over technology yeah. at CSX. That's that's crazy. Awesome. Yeah. I know this dude. Yeah. And it's awesome. like so you just that's never really cool. and it's not about like the people but you just never know you know, what kind of influence somebody could have on you. And so kind of going back to these thoughts of what to do, it is really nice to let people know later on, like the impact that they make if you have the ability to tell them. And I have told people like Isabel. That's great. That's and, really cool. you know, the fact that we're Facebook friends, I'm pretty sure that cements it. Right. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not for the younger generation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a very personal decision. That means something for some of the very yeah. fancy. Yeah. It's yeah. not just following. Yeah. <laughs> we're friends. We're friends. Yeah. We like it's things. <laughs> yeah. 
That's really great, though. <laughs> that is really cool. And so I, I, yeah. Bleh, well, no, you had a follow-up thing, and then I have something I should I didn't. Oh, he doesn't. <laughs> He's selling it really well. I had the Thanks. First two <laughs> so I do also, in the interest of, before we uh, run out of time. Yeah, we're, here, we're getting close. Um, at some point, I wanted to ask, what is just like a normal day like for you? Although it's funny because as I was trying to schedule this, you're like, well, I'm in Iceland for <laughs> eight days and then I'm gonna go, yeah, so you are all over the place. It's, yeah. So I don't know if a normal day is the, the best way to phrase it, but so, what is, you know, a, a, a selection of normal days, whether it's traveling. So that was vacation. So that How was, was it? That awesome. was beautiful. Even better. And, okay. and it was not work, but that was vacation. Awesome. But a normal day, so it's, could be anything like today, for example, I have some new analysts in, so it's a little abnormal, mm -hmm. but it could be working with getting, you know, training some of the teammates to be getting to the place where they need to be or to learning things. Um, this week, I'll be going to a customer in St. Louis, a customer called Schnucks, and it's a grocery retailer. And so this week, we're preparing the presentation or the deck. Okay. And so I'm having meetings, talking about the presentation. Like, are we telling them what the objective is? Are we following through with the information? So we're having mm -hmm. meetings. We're looking at financials. We all manage our own profit and loss statements, P&Ls. Okay. So we're looking at the P&Ls. We're having a lot of meetings, a lot of conference calls, lots of meetings. Mm -hmm. But they're very impactful, and they help us get to where we want to be. And then this week, I'm going you know, to travel there, mm -hmm. and I'll present it. And I'll have a conversation with their directors about the investment that we make as a company. And then we'll get follow-ups from that. And next week, we'll be working on those follow-ups. And we'll be mm -hmm. preparing for the meeting I have on the West Coast for state or, uh, SSI, which is a West Coast account. Okay. So it's kind of like a lot of the same things, but different. So building presentations to help people decide what items they should be carrying, mm -hmm. where they should carry it, why they should carry it. Do you make a presentation like that once a month, you know, twice a month? Or like what's yeah. the, how often? So on average, each category that we manage, mm -hmm. so a category would be like cough, cold, Plant, chocolate you know, Lysol. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, chocolate is a category <laughs> yeah. Lysol. So on average, they, those, most of our accounts have one or two every year. Okay. So within my team, we have more than 100 accounts. Mm -hmm. Wow. And within each of those accounts, we have about 20 categories. So That's a load. we're constantly <laughs> yeah. doing this. But yeah. then within that, just like with everything, we have priorities. Mm -hmm. And everybody is super important and every account is super critical. But sometimes we have to yeah. manage our resources the way that you know, sure. line up with... To focus on one particular yeah. thing. And that's something uh, it's come up now several times in the conversation, but also something that I was totally unaware of as a teenager that I now see is extremely important. Mm -hmm. There's a finite amount of time, a finite yep. amount of money, a finite amount of people, totally. brain power, all that stuff. You can't, in some cases, do everything. You can't. That's just the way it is. Yeah. 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 I did have to learn early on because there was, I, I do think there's a, a tremendous value in like putting in extra hours and mm -hmm. losing a little bit of sleep to get the job done. Sure. But at some point, you also have to listen to your own. You can't you know, lose all your sleep. You can't lose all Yeah, there has <laughs> to be a balance. Sleep. So much sleep. Like right. you have yeah. to sleep. So sometimes you do have to know what the fine line is and know yourself to know. Yeah. You know, whether you've if reached really the point and is it going to be there tomorrow? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Is today it? Yeah. 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 Huh. Mm -hmm. So would you say that most of what you do is centered around like these presentations, preparing for them, evaluating afterward? Is that kind of what? Yeah. You're... So that's the team mostly does that. I'm in the role that I'm in, especially with people management, like I'm able to make sure that the team is staying on track or help mm -hmm. them see the greater strategic vision. Or if yeah. something happens at this account, how can I then help them change their presentation to bring in other examples? And then, of course, managing people is a full-time job and just yeah. making sure that everybody is kind of working and then managing expectations as a total team across all those accounts. I have a, a one financial statement and I, in sales, have goal not goals, but I have like forecasts mm -hmm. that I say that I'm going to sell, my team mm -hmm. is going to sell. And that's based Hopefully on I sell your it. awareness of the data, yeah. the trends, yeah, all the that history, stuff. what's going sure. on. And I have to be prepared to speak to it, even though I'm not personally as in tune with 100 plus accounts. Yeah. I have to trust that my team is and I have to trust yeah. that they can give me that information and I can relay it up or down or sideways or whatever. If I remember correctly, uh, you because I'm thinking of like eight things while we're doing this, I'm sure yeah. we all are. Uh, you referred to that as serving before, like you're serving this team, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I like that like, idea. Yeah, I think it's like everybody constantly is within one another. And if you're not, then 
maybe it's too self-serving. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We constantly have to be thinking about how it serves others. Mm -hmm. And those best in class examples or, or what you're doing at one account may be a best in class example for somebody else yeah. or a model, or oh. it might give them the data to tell them why you should do it. Or could it be a negative point too? Or like, it oh, we tried this and that was really not a great we idea. We often show non-examples. Yeah. Yeah. Very often show non-examples. Huh. And it's a great way to say, and, and the data will be there one way or the other. And hopefully you show it and help them understand it so they can make educated decisions. Yeah. So would you say most of your, just like in the normal day-to-day -day life, um, mostly it's meetings or calls or talking to people or work at like answering emails, being on a computer, doing something like what is the, it could be it all, could from, be it could be anything. Like yeah. I could be on a plane for eight hours cause I'm going to Minneapolis and there isn't a direct flight. And so I'm on email the whole time. Yeah, okay. And then as soon as I get off, I'm on like phone calls. There are some days when I'm on back to back phone calls hmm. and never talk to a customer. Hmm. There are other days when I would be customer meeting, customer meeting, customer meeting. And I, and I think that's why I love sales. Because yeah, in every role that, that I've been yeah. in sales, there hasn't been a single role that's been the same thing every day. Even mm -hmm. in the entry level roles, it's been very different. There's a lot of, we call them fire drills, you know, a lot of things that come up that need yeah. to be tackled immediately. Yeah. Um, so very different than like fire drill in school. Like people, right. yeah. <laughs> Which is <laughs> the reality about creating right. 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 so a little much. different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Feels yeah. similarly intense. Right. Yeah. But yeah. So the variety is a lot big of variety. part of the yeah. appeal for you to be like the Yeah, because at the root of it is consumer behavior and the way that things change, behavior does change. You know, with sure. digital we were talking about and like yeah. you know, everything changes enough that like you know, or if there is a recall of a product and it happens to affect something that you sell, or maybe it doesn't. Or if there's hurricanes, when I used to sell Lysol wipes on that side of the business, whenever yeah. there was a hurricane, you would see huge spikes in Lysol sales. Huh. Cough cold season, we're gearing up now for we're going into cough cold season, mm -hmm. which you guys probably only think of it as like, yeah, I get a flu. Kind of aware and, of it yeah, yeah, like so much of what we do is predicated on, okay, are we ready? Are there gonna be displays on the floor? Like when you go hmm. into a Publix, and that's not my account anymore, but if you go into a Publix, are you gonna walk into a display, which makes you go, hmm, I do need this. Yeah. Yeah. Or have we fought to get the item on the right space on shelf? So when you have a sick kid and you go in, you can find it exactly where you need it and you choose our product and not our competition. Mm -hmm. So, so much of what we do could be rooted in that. And mm -hmm. like, it, it is constantly changing. So it's, it's never exactly the same. Hmm. That's so cool. And that's, yeah. fits your personality. It seems yeah. like that's what you I like love about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, but it's also, I it fully can be like, that. you know, yeah. exciting yeah. and stressful, yeah. Yeah. exciting, it is, but yeah. I like it. It sounds yeah. very cool. So is there, it, it, it's funny, you sound like in a lot of ways, like you're right where you should be. Yeah. yeah. So I want to ask, you know, is there an aspect, maybe not like a job itself, but like the lifestyle or something that is more difficult to deal with or not your favorite or like yeah. the downsides, you know, or. So I travel almost every week. Which oh, really? is, well. which can be exhausting. Yeah. Like as soon as I sit down and want to do some administrative stuff, like the stuff that you just kind of have to do, like priority setting or mm -hmm. like cleaning out my inbox, my emails, so I don't have a thousand emails. Yeah. It's like I get on another plane, and I mean that's a tough lifestyle to yeah. keep up with. It's sure, it's sure. easy to like personally let your life like kind of go in a different direction. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, it's tough if you have a family. Mm -hmm. Like, so it can be tough. So I've had to be very conscientious in making good decisions about my travel and saying, okay, well, when I go travel places, I'm going to try to do something fun when I go there. I'm going to yeah, like look cool. up, you know, mini, I haven't been yet, but in <laughs> Minneapolis, there is a spam museum. Like I intend really? to go see the spam museum because who can say they've done that? Right. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think <laughs> at least they're not You're bragging the about it. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's that, something to look forward to. <laughs> that probably wasn't a seller. <laughs> I swear I make a career sales pitch. Yeah. 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 I think uh, travel can be good and bad. The, mm -hmm. the, the bad is that like it can take be it a toll, yeah. take a toll on you. The good is when we go on trips, when my husband and I go on trips or my family goes on trips, we often have a lot of frequent sure. flyer points and yeah. hotel miles. Right, and right, right. Yeah, all that's so useful. we're yeah. able to like afford things we would have um, gotten, yeah, we wouldn't have gotten otherwise. It's kind of cool. Perk thing. Yeah. Yeah. Perk. Definitely. Do you, um, 
do you have sort of a, I mean, I, I know the answer to this question. Do you have a vision for the future? Do you know like, where you want to be in a year or 10 years or yeah. whatever? You know? So it's funny. My, I before thought I was certainly going to be somebody's CEO. Like I mm-hmm. knew, I knew I was going to climb the ranks all and the like the be all the way at the top. Yeah. But I think there are some personal quality of life sacrifices that happen uh, at yeah. different stages. I, there's definitely been one in this role versus my last one. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how many sacrifices I, at some point I have to just accept, like, maybe I don't want to make as many quality of life sacrifices. In a sense. It is. Yeah. This is your life. What do you want to do with it? Yeah. Because, you know, eventually I, you know, will want my own family, Mm -hmm. you know, outside of my husband. And so it's a lot tougher to leave constantly and be gone and on the road if you have things going on back home, Sure. you know, like in a different, like more consistently. So that's a little bit of a challenge. Um, I would like to do more things. But I don't necessarily need to be the next vice president or... Yeah. 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 Like, I want to stay doing what I'm doing as long as it's rewarding, as long as it's challenging. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm bored, I'll be miserable and probably everyone around me will be too. Like, I'll make sure. Probably not. Everybody else. We only have a few more minutes. Uh, I had one more question I wanted to make sure we covered it. Let's uh, let's end on me saying everyone will be miserable. Yeah. (laughs) Well, so uh, just a quick follow-up on that. um, So it sounds like you kind of you're aware of the opportunities that might come up, but you don't have a concrete, like, I want to do this next, or you're just trying to be aware of the balance of... Totally. Like, for my company to do much else, I would have to move, uh, probably. I would very likely have to move. I've been able to, like, not move in eight years of being here, almost eight years, and that's been an anomaly. So I personally, like, am not trying to... My husband has a business here. Like, I'm not Mm -hmm. trying to move. So, you know... I'm aware there are opportunities and if something could be more flexible as technology changes and I can yeah. keep doing you things from Tampa, yeah. then yeah, I would do other things. But I also really love my role and I haven't fully maximized it. There's a ton of stuff I haven't even touched. That's a really good point. And yeah. I don't know that I could master it even in two years if I wanted. There's so many things that I just haven't done sure. and the team is capable of doing and you know, we're still, you know, we've worked together for almost two years yeah. in this role and there's so many things that could be done. Hmm, cool. Yeah. And it's good to be aware of that, I think. Like, yeah. It also shows, it's kind of like as everything of, else does, yeah. you're looking around, you're yeah, constantly you head on to. a swivel. Yeah. Um, this kind of touches on what you just said a little bit. If you were going to guess uh, what types of technological changes, uh, thinking about things like automation, more data, more analytics, more artificial intelligence, even yeah. VR, all those kinds yeah. of things, do you have any guess what your field might look like in five or 10 years? Yeah, so stuff is actually changing now. Uh, we're constantly, some of the analytical roles, instead of people just delivering data, there are like bots and programs that are just delivering it in these beautiful mm-hmm. dashboards. It requires some people to do some work up front, but now stuff is being delivered in seamless ways that 10 years ago I was like building and formatting mm-hmm. and creating. Delivered, that. sorry, digitally or? Like yeah, digitally. Delivery? So like yeah, okay. reports. So we have dashboards or reports like, you know, constantly of how sales look. Mm-hmm. And so before it used to require somebody going in manually like, doing it, formatting yeah. it, making it look one way. But now and there's all these systems where you can yeah. just you know, and then mm-hmm. somebody does it. It gets there's some architects who sit oh. in a room and make it look pretty yeah. and then it just spits it out. And like then architects it can are you mean like data architects? Uh, yeah. You know, really more just like in my mind it's usually <laughs> it's usually just like people who are in the roles who like think and put their hats on, but yeah. like they'll call themselves architects. Okay. <laughs> like they're not they're not <laughs> actual <laughs> It's like it's yeah. like how can we sit along a room and like talk about ways that we're gonna take pieces of your job and like <laughs> automate it? Yeah. 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 So so there's a lot of that. Uh, there's some stuff that my team does today, like forecasting, which is what do we think the sales will be for this year? And we're now introducing a new system. The company is that's rolling out. That's going to help uh, AI build out. This is what your forecast should be. So we have a little bit of that at play now, but we're going to our demand planning team, the people who are producing the product, are now going to lean into those forecasts where before they trusted ours. Mm-hmm. So there's some interesting things like that, you know, that I think happens in every industry. Sure. So we're trying the all industries I think are moving a little bit closer to that. Yeah. Yeah. So what I say to my team, especially the analysts, that's more reason why you have to take the data and build a story around it and think about it and you bring earlier, the anecdotes yeah. that mm-hmm. a robot or AI can't do, mm-hmm. right? Like you have to be thinking like, 
walk the store, see what's going around. And that experience from retail that I didn't love, Mm -hmm. I believe it or not, I walk retail stores constantly just seeing what's happening. Hmm. Because those are the tidbits that you're not going to get in an algorithm. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, so it's already changing. It's constantly changing. And the more data and the more that people use, you know, digital apps and the more that you're like interacting with in the digital space Mm -hmm. with any cost, any like grocery store, convenience store, whatever, all that information is just being data mined and taken back. So it's constantly changing how we sell, which is different because people being able to purchase on their phones wasn't a thing when I started. Oh yeah, for sure. So it's totally different It's a pretty big thing now. Yeah. Pretty big. (laughs) (laughs) So if, um, Sorry, I was. Can I ask? One no, more? you're fine. Okay. Yeah. If um, if you were giving advice, which you kind of are, to uh, <laughs> someone who's yeah. you know, 17, 18, 19, yeah. 20 years old, who's listening to this and is thinking, oh, this like this general direction sounds very interesting to me. Is there any particular technical skill set you would recommend that they at least look into, possibly related to Excel or AI or any of those yeah. things so that you would throw out? I would say Excel is always a great one. But even more than that, I think whatever industry you're into, like set up Google alerts on your phone. This is so basic, but set up Google alerts. So every day you get, or weekly, you get Mm -hmm. a digest in your email about what's going on in the financial world or AI, if you're even interested in that specifically, you'd get a lot for that. But, you know, set Google alerts for specific things that you care about because you'll learn more from that, which will then tell you what maybe you should look into. Because Excel is big now, but who knows, right? Like who knows what it will be? So I'd hate for anyone to hang their hat on just one thing sure but just like listening on the linkedin on yeah. the google alerts or whatever that it probably goes further again, being aware of what's yeah. going on totally. around you that probably goes questions. further than any one thing because that one thing might not be the answer by the time they get out sure. of school sure sure yeah Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're like the perfect. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. You did a way better job at this than we did. Yes. <laughs> so thanks. Yeah. My pleasure. Do you have any, I don't know, I mean, you kind of just closed on it, but sort of general advice related to somebody interested in your field? I mean, that was. Is there yeah. anything that you I think, think we should have asked? Anything we've no. <laughs> I think it's so important to know that, like, if, if you feel nervous or intimidated or you know, if you're not sure, mm-hmm. n- you're Everybody not going to get yelled at. Like way. you're yeah, not going to get yelled at for just that. speaking That's up so and asking yeah. for help or asking for support. And if you don't do that, then people will just assume you've got it together. Mm-hmm. So, and that's a bad place to right. be in because then you better have to get <laughs> <When you don't. laughs> like, yeah. So yeah. just don't be afraid to ask questions. It served me incredibly well. And you know, my peers, it served well too. Like, so ask questions, learn as much as you can, mm-hmm. take notes, whether it's on your phone or notebook, <laughs> like yeah. take notes and just, you know, soak it all up and learn from people around you because every single person, if they're in roles or even if they're not, and you know, they're in a different type of role, they have something to, to, to lend to the uh, conversation. So. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Makes a ton of sense. Thank you so much. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. So once more, really want to thank Alex for her time. And I think that she laid out a lot of ideas that are very, very important if someone is uh, in the early stages of a career or is even just sort of considering what kinds of careers they might be interested in and might be thinking along the lines of like a retail sort of thing or anything. Yeah, kind of anything with people, which is sort of everything. (laughs) I really feel like there was a lot of kind of wide reaching not ground rules exactly, but just really, really good information about how to deal with other people, how to be sure. direct, how to approach people and not be intimidated. And also, especially if you're going into or planning to go into uh, some kind of a corporate environment or a large company kind of environment, especially, I think. But like you said, for anything, but yeah. especially for that. Yeah, a lot of just the kind of thing that you wish was taught in school. And I guess it may be taught to some people like indirectly by... Right. It was not taught to me. Group or, yeah, exactly. <laughs> not explicitly taught. Um, it was really valuable uh, interpersonal um Skills, yeah, that um, can be kind of hard to put your finger on, but to yeah. hear someone who is obviously really good at it just kind of explain right. how it works can make you feel be like, oh, that's a little more comfortable. Stuff we should all know, but yeah, yeah, and to realize, like, you know, it feels a little funny to look up, you know, how to contact a executive or some important person in your company, right. and even it feels funny for her, but you know, she's sincere, she's honest. Yeah, she's, well, that yeah. for me is um, one of the biggest takeaways from her. Just everything she said, really, is. It's okay not to know stuff. It's 
actually good to admit that you don't know stuff because you're going to because you can't avoid stuff. it. Every single right. person, every single person stuff they don't doesn't know, know yeah. stuff. So to be honest about that and to recognize your own strengths and weaknesses, to think about how that fits together with a team, whether you're on a team being managed by someone else or you're managing your own team at some point. Uh, and just her idea about taking initiative actually caring about how well you're doing and uh, doing everything that you can, you know, to move forward, to find mentors. I really thought the information, I really thought her thing about uh, having mentors and sometimes they didn't even know they were her mentors at first. Yeah. And then eventually she, am I saying that weird? Mentor, mentor, mentor. Uh, anyway, whatever. Uh, you know what I mean right yeah. Yeah. Mentor. No, it was totally normal until a second ago. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. anyway, it's one of those words you say it over and over again. Yeah. yeah. Refrigerator so, was like that for me, I feel like for all of third grade. <laughs> It's like there's no right way to say this. Anyway. Refrigerator. Yeah. Uh, so luckily she didn't mention that. But so, yeah. yeah. So mentors, uh, it still doesn't sound right. But yeah, more importantly, uh, to have some sort of person who gives you guidance and counsel. Yeah. And that you can pattern yourself after other people. They don't even necessarily have to know that you're doing it. Yeah. Uh, but that at some point she was like, if I could, I would solidify it with them. And, yeah. and say, you know, I will the way, use the word mentor. I think of you as a mentor. Because a lot smart. of people probably feel like, oh, I love a mentor, but but I assume that person will just have to fall in my lap or I'll never get one. And for right. her, it was like, I'm going to walk down the hallway and these people are going to be my mentors. Right. Yeah. Somebody out here is going to do yeah. this. And that also kind of yeah. goes to her thing about uh, having a thick skin, you know, from sales yeah. and telemarketing. If you ask... Some people are not going to go for it. Sure, that's fine. It doesn't you mean you can't on. ask yeah, somebody else. You know, yeah, exactly. Um, another thing... Sorry, we were just mentioning mentors. Um Oh, yeah, like patterning yourself after someone. She even mentioned, like, dressing like certain people. Sure. Like, it's almost like don't overthink it. Like, don't assume that you know what the secret sauce is if they wear that jacket and you feel like you're going to feel more like that person if you wear that jacket. Right. Like, go for it. Like, yeah, exactly. you're, it's part of a pattern of behavior. It's not like that's the one thing that's going to make the difference. Yeah. But it's it's part of a mindset. And, you know, if you're kind of dedicated to that, and it, it makes sense. It all kind of fits together. One of my favorite... Um, little anecdotes uh that i think is is telling um is when she described um selling drinks in the in the restaurant uh setting you mm -hmm. know where she was like all right how many lemonades can i i'm gonna make somebody at this table is gonna buy a lemonade you know right. like something like that just that mentality because a lot of people and it's understandable if your boss isn't awesome and you're working at a restaurant and you think i don't care how many of these i sell you know yeah. but it, it's more about like for you like can you do this you know right. and it's not like i'm gonna thrill my i mean maybe you have an awesome manager or an awesome boss and you do want to wow them or whatever and that's even better but even so it, it's just for you like can i overcome this thing can sure. i interact with this person in this way well, and also you're working that shift anyway you you're there well anyway exactly to... like this can be practiced for later in your life like whatever job you have is likely to involve talking to people trying to convince them of something um you know you know last week i sold four of these can, you know can i do five this week or last table did this can this sure. table do that and just see what happens and i and, would imagine even if it doesn't work you learn something from that too yeah it's like the telemarketing thing too right. it's just a minute later there's somebody else and you try it again and you see what's different yeah, and just yeah, that yeah. kind of self-motivation is huge and I don't know how you teach it but I think part of it might just I be I think all you have to do is listen to a podcast about it I so think I so think, I think everyone lucky you was... guys so <laughs> right. but I mean I do think it's it's less about teaching and more like if you could just demonstrate like this actually has value people be like oh yeah like I didn't realize it would matter if I did that was that. a big thing I mean in my you know? early jobs I just thought of them as I'm here for a certain number yeah, of hours it's I a lot of hours a certain number of dollars it can't be hour. any better than it is right I wish yeah. that someone had just woken me up to, hey, try to do this better. Like, yeah. While you're here, why not? You yeah. Know? And there, you know, there could be, and not, certainly there are settings where you're not going to be appreciated. The people above you are not going to notice. Sure. But, you know, I think two things we learned here. One is you can keep working that job while you find another one that seems to work. And uh, Alex mentioned looking for companies where the culture matched with what was important to her. You know, sure. you can obviously, it's the 21st century you can go on the internet you can without visiting all these places you can find out a lot about them you know do they donate to causes that you care about right are they involved in sports you stuff or whatever on, it is that you also are. sites like i think it's glass glass door, door i think why well, you don't know the name of it yeah 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 whatever yeah these types of sites and see from employees who work about. there exactly yeah. you can do that kind of research and you can think how could i get there from here i'll keep working this you know maybe thankless job now but i'll sleep better at night knowing sure. that I'm actively trying to make it better. Um, so there's the whole, you can seek out a better arrangement where your efforts 
should be more appreciated if you feel like they're not being appreciated right now. And the other side of it is regardless of who's appreciating you, like look at it from your perspective. As we said, even if you're just trying to practice for yourself, trying to better yourself, um, even if you feel like you're in a thankless spot now, in addition to looking for a better one, you can still be practicing whatever it is that you're doing each day, you know, talking to customer service people can you you know if you're the customer service person can you solve their problem can you be there for them you know how they need you to be there um can you sell whatever you're trying to sell you know that kind of stuff there, there's so much that you can do if you can decide like just for me i want to see yeah. how well i can do this and if nobody appreciates me here then one day i'll be doing it somewhere else but, right, exactly but for now exactly. you know I'll, I'll do the best i can um that seems to be one of those things that isn't really taught it's hard to teach yeah but um you know, in this interview and other interviews that we've done, we've seen it time and again, just that that self-motivation where you, the people above you, the people around you, everybody can tell, like, this is a person who's really trying to do it right. right. And I think that's also a really important thing. We didn't exactly get into this with Alex, but I feel like it was sort of implied. I'll go ahead and say it was implied. <laughs> uh, don't blame her for that if, if I'm wrong. Implied. Yeah. Um, you know, she mentioned reaching out to uh, the higher ups in companies and trying to have lunch with them. I think a big part of that is you have to be credible too. like if you're the guy who is always showing up late and then you're trying to have sure. lunch you know like it, it, it all fits comes together. across yeah it's all yeah. part of one thing is if you um it's all sorry if that was weirdly phrased but it's all <laughs> it all goes together as you said um you know you have to be sincere in what you're doing and if you if you're don't just like oh, i'll have lunch with vp and i'll get a race next week or whatever if, right. if you're trying to do your best work then that's part of it and if you approach them and instead of telling them yeah. how to do their job maybe you're asking you know oh i you know i'd love to be doing this later in life later in my career you know do you have any advice for sure. me asking because that's questions. another thing too yeah. when you are in those kinds of higher positions i think most people that i've ever spoken to are in those kinds of positions understand that the company, in order to continue to thrive, needs talented yes, and dedicated people. Yes, there has to be an upcoming on the generation yeah. for you, right? If they know absolutely, what doing. their life is better if they can connect with right. younger people or people younger in the company. You know, coming. But up. also, again, if you're asking to have lunch with those people and you never show up on time and you yeah. don't do your job well, <laughs> yeah, that's not great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now, something I just hit the microphone by accident. <laughs> something right. uh, kind of similar to what you just mentioned, uh, but a little bit of a different direction. Also very, very important to me, I think, uh, from what Alex just said, was talking about how from the very beginning of her career kind of or this this part of her career with these uh, consumer you know, directed goods was the manager or the supervisor who told her about the importance of tracking like the analytics of what was going on around her. Yeah. Okay. You set up this display, how many people came and took the thing off this time and was it the same last yeah. week? It doesn't matter if it's over in this part of the store or that and how that sort of through line of analytics and data, thinking about all that, how now that's coming up later in her career in different ways. She mentioned the artificial intelligence, all of this kind of forecasting that's being done by software now instead of by people. That's not going away, probably. So anybody, yeah, who's going into this field is going to need to be sort of at least conversant, vaguely comfortable uh, at the beginning with Excel and and dealing with data. Yeah. yeah, all of those kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. And and at the same time, that is also, you know, it's one of those things where you don't have to go in knowing all about it. Sure. But you have to be ready that that's going to be important. Right. You're and not if you don't have know a about job it, in this field and not at some yeah. point ever have to deal with that. Yeah. yeah. And, and and if you aren't comfortable going in and you know you need to be, then that's yeah. the and time that goes back to the other thing to talk to know the people what you above don't you. Know or try to be yeah. aware of things you don't know and, and work on uh, closing those gaps when you're aware of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So she said a lot of other very interesting things, of course, but for me, those are sort of the major things that I would want somebody to take away uh, if I were mentoring someone myself. Those are some of the things for me. Yeah. Another thing I think, too, uh, before we close out, um, was she I think one of her bosses at one point um, asked her to track the time she actually spends on things. Yes, the time management. Kind of uh, aligned her perception of the way she spends time with the reality of how she spends time, which I think we all... Absolutely. Um, you know, it's hard to be in touch with that unless you yeah. pull you out a can't stopwatch see and this, time it. Uh, <laughs> podcast audience, but Patrick is giving me a meaningful look while <laughs> saying. There's a lot I of people we all could who have from, trouble knowing how yes. much time things take. But that is, I mean, it's, you know, when do you ever take out a stopwatch and time yourself? Almost no one does right, that, right, you right. know, for, for normal tasks. You think, oh, that took 10 minutes and it yeah. was 35 minutes and you didn't know it. Sure. Um, and, you know, time is something we have a finite amount of, you know, each day and, 
um, making the most of it is a pretty yeah. huge deal. And I also thought it was interesting how that she then took that among other things. And when she was a manager, she had other people do yeah. know, that because that's a useful exercise. Absolutely. And, yeah. And I mean, also shows the importance. That's of, the best endorsement is right. you did this for me and now yeah. I'm doing it for my, my people because you right. know, it's a valuable lesson. Yeah. So yeah, I think Honestly, at the end of this, I felt like I was ready to just charge into any corporate environment yeah. and like, take charge. Yeah, I learned a lot from this. I'm definitely yeah. going to listen it to it Really, more really uh, interesting and yeah. full of like very applicable. And also, like all of these different interviews we're doing, even if you as a listener don't think that you would ever want to go into this uh, sort of yeah. environment, a, maybe from listening to someone who's succeeded in it, you might, you might a get different a different picture take on now. that. Yeah. And B, even if you don't go into it, just sort of knowing how those types of organizations and companies work will allow you to steer yourself just in your daily life. Yeah. It'll allow you to have a better picture kind of of uh, how things are functioning around you, even if you're not directly involved. In yeah, absolutely. There are themes that have definitely popped up even in these first, these early interviews that we've done that just keep coming up, whether it's, you know, corporate America or small businesses or whatever, Police where, force. Yeah. yeah, where just talking with the people around you and being able to be uh, kind of functional in that environment and working with those people and being on time for things and communicating well and all that stuff is super important. And one more thing that I remembered I wanted to talk oh, about thank, earlier. Thank goodness. That was another huge uh, <laughs> takeaway, I think. So huge you couldn't remember. Yeah, so <laughs> enormous <laughs> that it just blocked out my memory completely was um, early on, Alex described how she had that job where she was going into stores and setting up displays and, and doing that kind of work. And was that I the one where she wasn't tall enough to reach the shelf? That was the that job, was yeah. Which yeah. was awesome. Yeah. It's not a metaphor. I, I can't reach that, that top shelf. Um, so she, I think somebody gave a presentation or there's some kind of a training thing mm -hmm. where she got exposed to a different part of what that the company does. Category management. Was that the yeah, thing? I yeah. think so. And she talked to somebody and they said, oh, you know, you wouldn't normally be on the path to go right you know there but direction. if you want to then this is what you would do and just the way that she like took charge of the path she was on i think it's so cool because yeah. so often people feel like oh well i'm here how can i get there you know like what's you throw your hands up in the air and sure and that's it and it's understandable to feel that way yeah but you may as well ask somebody <laughs> because right. if you can find out that there's a way to get there then maybe there is and, and as we said before especially if you're able to get with a company that seems to value people who take the initiative and who are earnest and are getting the work done and everything else um, if you can find a person who looks like they could have a future with your company and they're enthusiastic about this other thing and they're not doing it now but you can get them into the training for it or, or set yeah, them down you that mean path if you're, if you're someone if you're someone who's a higher like up person Alex is supervising exactly and you hear that someone like Alex really wants to get into yeah. that I mean that's great like yeah. you'd, you'd be so thrilled to find someone who is motivated to, to because, do that again, kind of work because again the future of your company depends on yeah, being these kinds of exactly. people yeah. Um, so, so yeah I thought that was a, a really really important lesson and Again, it's one of those things. Every single company won't react as well to that as every other one. You don't know. But if it comes down to just, hey, you know, I really think this sounds like a cool area to get into. I'd love to sure. go down that path. Raise your hand. Take a step. Yeah. Who would I talk to? How would I go about doing that? You might be very pleasantly surprised. And, you know, for Alex, obviously, it seems to work out really well because yeah, it's definitely. kind of it was a major turn that she took in, in the path that she's going down. Uh, sure. And it seems to have gone really well. So that's another yeah. Oh, and sorry. One last thing. For there me. we go. It's good to say. Speaking of uh, <laughs> paths and things like that, um, another very, very common thing for any adult, whether we've interviewed them or not, but especially the ones we've interviewed, is this idea of sort of a winding path. The place that Alex is in now. Uh, professionally and personally is not at all what she described thinking she was going to be getting into when she Politics, started remember? college. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this is very typical um, that people have those kinds of, I think I want to do one thing when I'm 18 and then I turn out, I actually really like something else. Yeah. Once I actually did that, 40. I hated that. Or I found out the other thing. Right. Or I found that it's not what I thought it was or, yeah. or whatever it might be. Um, and I think, but I think just from my own experience, my reading and also uh, dealing with the clients that we've dealt with directly, so many people who are in high school or college uh, maybe don't recognize the large uh, percentage of the adult population who thought they'd be doing one yeah. thing when they were 18 and turn out to enjoy something else way more yeah. know, when they and, and to be better at perhaps something else uh, way more later on. Yeah. So I just wanted to point that out that that's, uh, for me, a major part of her story um, and a major part of many people's stories, but something that's easy to overlook if you haven't been through that kind of change yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd say, I mean, it's hard to quantify across the entire population, but in my experience, it's more the norm than not that oh, overwhelmingly. something. Yeah. yeah. And actually, I believe it's going to be our next episode that we're talking to somebody who actually 
laid out a path early in life and he walked down that whole path just how he thought he would. Yeah, yeah. That which can happen. happen. It yeah, happens, it's not absolutely. like it's bad if that happens, but if something along the way, either whether it's your choice or it's not, causes you to not go down that path, um, you know, you are in good company with just about everybody else. Yeah. You know, that's a very normal experience. And certainly... Especially if you're at a high school age, a lot of what you've done up to that point, you know, you sign up for classes. It's it's predictable. It, it's, you know, the whole year is kind of laid out in front yeah. of you each school year. Like everything is very structured and predictable. And then when you get out into the post high school world and post college world, um, that really like certainly that changes. Yeah, yeah. And it's understandable that that would freak out a, a lot of people out and um, and be a cause for a lot of stress and worry. But we just, right. yeah, this is a great example of how it's super normal you know, yeah. to, to find yourself doing something that you didn't think you'd be and doing. just once more to bring it all back, maintaining this mindset of how can I get better? What can I do? Who can yeah, I Yeah, if you take that with you into whatever right. it is Let that you're doing. Let me find a mentor and, and see that relationship your best and learn from that person. Situation. Yeah. Yeah, that's applicable. Absolutely. Anyway. So thank you, Alex. <laughs> Even though you yeah, are not seriously. here right now, that was <laughs> so informative. Uh, hopefully for you guys, certainly for us, I feel... <laughs> enlightened yeah. and like <laughs> uh, all these areas now so that was uh, excellent and I think we are finally out of things that we want to add to the end of this well I mean I could keep going we could it's gonna be twice I as long I think we are yeah. officially out of <laughs> before you hear the whole thing Good over news, again everyone. by yeah. way of us this episode was hosted by me Mike Barrett and by my brother Patrick Barrett our guest was Alex Bialik whose name rhymes Every musical element was created and performed by Parker Hale Hastings. A grizzly bear's bite is strong enough to crush a bowling ball. Our online video courses are different from other test prep options because we strive to teach you every single thing you need to know to beat the test as efficiently as possible in a format that's as convenient as possible. We know you're probably very busy, and the last thing you need to worry about is spending untold hours of your precious youth trying to fit an in-person SAT or ACT class into your schedule. And that's especially true given the fact that most of those courses, unfortunately, are not very helpful for most of the people who end up taking them. So our online video courses are available in their entirety from the moment you sign up. You can watch them on any connected device at your own convenience. And of course, if you feel like you want to spend more time on particular parts of the course, you can easily go back and do that. Once you learn our techniques from the training portion of the course, you'll then be able to see hundreds of videos in which we put these techniques into action against real official test questions. The SAT course includes a set of walkthrough videos for every single question in an entire real SAT. And the ACT course also includes a set of walkthrough videos for every single question in an entire real ACT. Now, our courses don't come with their own practice tests, but there's a reason for that. It's very important that you only ever practice with real official test questions written by the actual companies that write the SAT and the ACT. Now, don't worry, you can get plenty of free practice tests online for either test. So there's never actually any need for you to buy fake third-party tests written by us or by any other company. In fact, <laughs> we don't write them for that exact reason. Now here's another critical thing that sets our courses apart. A lot of test prep companies try to prepare you for the SAT or the ACT in the same way that someone else might prepare you for a math test or an English test in high school or college, because they don't seem to understand how different standardized tests are from regular high school and college tests. For example, in English class, your teacher probably rewards you for being able to interpret literary texts and find hidden meanings and symbols that are not plainly stated on the page. But that is exactly the sort of thing that will lead you to a wrong answer every single time you try to do it on the SAT or the ACT. And your math teacher probably rewards you for learning lots of different formulas and theorems and things and knowing exactly when to apply them when you see a question with a predictable format like the questions you probably work on in your homework sessions. But most standardized test math questions aren't like that at all. They don't use predictable formats, and you'll find that a lot of them can't even be solved using any kind of formula whatsoever. They use your knowledge of those standards to find the right answers to every single official SAT or ACT question that you'll ever see. And here's yet another thing <laughs> that sets our course offering apart. If you decide to sign up for either course, the SAT or the ACT, you'll automatically get unlimited lifetime access to both courses. So if you sign up for the SAT course, you also get permanent access to the ACT course as well. And vice versa, if you sign up for the ACT course, you get permanent access to the SAT course. And permanent access, by the way, also means that your siblings or any other people in your household can use your account to prepare for the SAT or the ACT now or years down the line. 
And here's one more big difference, and then I'll let you go because I've been talking about this for a while now. If you try out the courses and you decide they're not for you, you can just let us know within 30 days and we'll give you back every single penny of your purchase. There's no catch and no fine print. Just let us know within 30 days. If you don't like the course for whatever reason, which again, you don't have to tell us what the reason is, but if you don't like the course, we don't want to keep your money. It's as simple as that. So thank you very much for listening to this. If you're interested in signing up, head over to questprep.com and click on the courses tab. Thanks.